Six Gun Productions. New media, new rules. This is Geek News Radio. Broadcast 42 for Thursday, July 20th, 2017. This is how the board game democracy falls. You're listening to Geek News Radio, episode 42. I'm Dave in Birmingham. And I'm Fab in Isenhagen. Yet, not long, and I will be in Hamburg. Woo, Hamburg! Hamburg, which got burned to the ground. Yeah, uh, you were you were in Hamburg while this was happening. Uh, no, well let's okay. l- let's talk about that uh, in a bit. So okay. yeah, um, we got some stuff to talk about. Uh, we we had a very very nice weekend in Dublin. Mm. I'm gonna talk about that. Dave's been playing Eighth Edition. I got the rule book now. Um, it's all good, and I want to talk about uh, the Petya. Um, ransomware stuff. Yeah, because you, there's, there's, like, you've been doing stuff. I've been researching it, so I, I might as well just... Yeah, and then we've got, like, a little uh, Taylor 4 Warlords update. Oh, yeah. Uh, die Geschichte der vier Feldherren, you mean. Exactly that. Um, I uh, leave that to your expert pronunciation. <laughs> what are we drinking? I have, Fab, I have... Um, a pint of Elvis juice from Brodog because it's delicious. <laughs> Elvis juice. It's a fucking stupid name. Is it salty? Uh, no, it's kind of <laughs> it's a grapefruit infused IPA. It's six and a half percent and it's delicious. That reminds me, I've been just before the show, I've been listening to Billy Joe Shaver and that, <laughs> I think he has a song about like me and Elvis killing a bottle, I think. And he's he's like decapitating Elvis because it's an Elvis shaped bottle. Is that Billy Joe Shaver? I don't know. To look this up. Yeah, um, I'm drinking beer from Hamburg. I'm preparing myself. I'm drinking the Astra. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, I have to. I have to put that picture in the show notes. Um, I took. I took a photo at some point, where like, oh, I'm drink, drinking an Astra, and I noticed after, like, when I looked at the the picture that I was, you know, uh, I was holding it in my right hand. Mm-hmm. And I took like a picture of of the tattoo with the beer, and because it's a mermaid, it looks like right from the fucking Astra. You know, they're from Hamburg. And they have this anchor and the heart logo. You know that beer? I uh, yeah, I think you yeah yeah, and yeah. They always have these ads that are very Hamburg, uh. so it looks like a fucking ad. I'll, <laughs> I'll put a pic uh, put a picture in the show note show notes. Um, what was that song? Bloody hell. Uh. I don't know. Maybe it wasn't Billy Joe Shave. Anyway. Um God, I'm distracted. Uh I'm I'm fucking tired. Um mm, you've I, been working bonkers hours. Too much. Yeah, you'll have to you'll have to keep the show on keep, on track. Keep the hype. Yeah, yeah, keep, yeah. Well I'm I'm hyped up. I listen to music very loudly before we started the show to, to get it to become awake and shit and I've drank lots of club martyrs. So Oh I found the picture. <laughs> so that should work. Um it should all work. It's just like fuck I've I've just been everybody's like on holiday or or sick. Mm. So I've been like it feels like I've been doing all the work. <laughs> um yeah, it's been it's been crazy. I actually took tomorrow. I've got so many extra hours. At some point, they're cutting them off. We have this like where they're cutting where they cut them off mm-hmm. if you make too many. So at that point, you're just basically giving the um, employer money. Free money yeah? Yeah, and yeah, I'm never going to do that. I swore that when I started this mm-hmm. job. I'm like I'm a workaholic, but I'm not going that far. So I'll, I'll took it. I, I took it's the nice. Day off that, tomorrow. So basically, do you just like log your hours then? And say, yeah, yeah. We have this thing where you like log in when you arrive and you log out yeah. when you're done. It's, it's cool that that's kind of formalized. Is that like this is just like a really boring admin chat? But like, <laughs> does it does it like automatically then just add that onto holiday time that you can then like presumably book off with an online form? Yeah, yeah it's all online. Oh. It's like it's oh. all it's all an online um, thing, <laughs> and it's basically you can just um, you can just say, well, I want to deduct something from my thing okay. there. 
we kind of have that, but it's way less automated than that. Oh. Well, it's it's like you have to do you have to manually log in and shit. You don't we don't yeah, have cards we, and stuff. Oh, but, oh, I've literally no idea how to claim over time. It's actually re- yeah, you, <laughs> we used to have to do it in paper, and that was shit. Like, and and actually, this is quite good because we're now doing home office, and I can just like log home office. Like, if I start work, I just log myself in over mm. a VPN and stuff. Yeah, and, working from home is the best. Well, for me, it's like I get so much more done. Because people don't talk to you. <laughs> there's, there's no fucking annoying people asking you questions all the time. Um, so that it's just I just I write literally I write uh, like on a normal day in the office I write like two stories a day, mm-hmm. and at home I write four. Like mm. literally, I follow that double the stories. The problem, right. like the weird thing is that that like with us like working from home is still like. People look at you funny and it's still like a bit iffy, mm. like which I don't understand because I don't like I work so much more. <laughs> yeah, basically, I just sit in front of my computer, drink coffee, make a coffee, drink coffee, write, write, write. Um, yeah. Anyway, uh, where were we? I'm off completely off track. We were gonna start off by uh, oh Hamburg. Hamburg. Yeah, they're Hamburg. Hamburg. So Hamburg's a no-go area and it's on fire. <laughs> it was on fire. Yeah. So basically, I wasn't there. Um, I was like, Katie and me had made plans to not be in Hamburg when G20 was happening. Was that like, a specific plan to yes, avoid G20? Like, uh-huh. it wasn't only us, it was like friends did like the same thing. Like, friends yeah. went camping and shit. That um, was lo- lovely and wholesome. Yeah, the problem with that was, um, Katie had to get out on Friday afternoon, um, to go ah. to Hanover, Hanover and like, Friday day and night was when it was all kicking off. Like that was when the worst thing. So Friday, um, so I think I think Thursday afternoon they had like a demonstration. So right. basically, if you don't know, G20 big summit happened in, in, in Hamburg, right? Because Angela Merkel said, I will do it in Hamburg. And the Hamburg, like Olaf Scholz, the mayor said, yeah, let's do it in Hamburg. And then he said, oh, nobody will notice. Like, we have big events all the time. <laughs> literally, they, he literally said, like, on the 9th, people will say, oh, it's G20 over already. Um, <laughs> so massive, massive uh, <laughs> miscalculation on his part there. <laughs> uh, so basically, they had, like, the summit, and then there was, like, demonstrations, because, you know, in Germany, there's lots of demonstrations. We have, like, this right in, in the Constitution, you know, that we can have like demonstrations, and um, when you've been at like demonstrations in Germany, there's always like if it's like a left-leaning demonstration. I mean, I've been to many of these, right? Um, and there are big ones in Hamburg every first first uh, of May, which is like International Workers' Holiday, uh, <laughs> and they do burn down half the city then usually. But yeah, um, so they they always have like this. It's, they call it the black block. They're basically like Antifa guys. And in Germany, there's this law or there's these rules. You have to register a demonstration and everybody can go, but you're not, you're not allowed to, it's called Vermummungsverbot. Of course. Um, I'm, I'm intimately familiar with yeah. what the fuck does that mean? You're not allowed to like disguise your face. Okay. So there, there were, there were people there. That's why they called the black block. They always wear black and they're like a ma- ma- mask. Masked and shit, like you know, mm-hmm. with scarves and shit, and and the police was saying, now we have to take that off. And then the police was like, discussion discussing with the guys who organized this, and some people took it off, and others didn't. And then the the police said, this is a, it's Hamburg. Like the police is a bit Nazi. It mm. they've always been. They've been very like cracked down because um, Hamburg is its own federal state. Um, you probably heard of the Hanse. Yes. The, so the you know they and been, you, you don't you don't mean the Overwatch character Hanzo. No, no, no. Uh, the Hanzo is like the it's like a it was like a merchant thing like in the Middle Ages, a really rich merchant organization. Okay. Uh, and so they had they had their own city. So Hamburg's called Hansestadt. So Hanse City, Hamburg, Bremen oh. is one. Um, and so there there were like. Um, always like independent cities like Hamburg's been for a very long time been very independent and shit. And then when they made federal state in Germany, it was its own federal state. Right. Or is its own federal state. Um, and so it's, they're very like crackdowny the police. So nobody 
like I wasn't surprised this was going to happen. So they basically took apart this demonstration a bit too forcefully, one might say, um, because they were they were you know the the they weren't um, abiding by the Vermummungsverbot. Um, <laughs> It's fucking ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, so and then on Friday, um, you had like mobs of, of like 20 to 40 black clad, like disguised people running throughout the city of Hamburg, burning down cars. Yes, so, I saw lots of pictures of broken yeah. shop windows and burning cars. They were like, they would like smash in windows of cars and then throw like um, Molotov cocktails in there. Yeah, so and then um, there is this. You know, you probably know St. Pauli, um, which is like this famous area of Hamburg where like the red light district is. Um, okay. They have a I football can... club, club St. Pauli, um, which is this is a very left-leaning area. And there's, 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 a, there's a part of that or like an, like an, uh, a district close by called Chanze, Chanze Viertel, which is like extremely like left-oriented. I mean, there's like um, there's like a building there called the Rote Flora where... Um, they basically like seized this building, I think in the sixties or seventies mm-hmm. or something, and basically illegally, but you know, they, they have this building now and it's the same in Berlin. There's, there's buildings like this, it's like the, the hippies back in the day did all this shit. So it's like the left very hardcore left area. It's also like the party area of uh of Hamburg, this is where we go when you go party. Um, it's really cool, sounds, actually. Sounds great. Well, it's a nice place. It's like when when they when they passed the laws that 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 you weren't allowed to smoke mm-hmm. in restaurants in all of Europe, basically. Yeah. It, it went never into effect in St. Pauli and Schanze. It Never was <laughs> like that. People are well now. It's like it's kind of like if everybody agrees, that's kind of the rule. Like you have to say on the door, whatever they don't like. Nobody, everybody smokes inside there. Like, and people that visits like, how is this? How does this work? Isn't this against EU laws? But um, so it's a very cool area. But they were like kind of hiding people, and then basically they like they burned like shops, like they smashed in shops, they looted shops, they burned everything down. Like they were, no, they didn't burn everything down, but there was like lots of fires started, and then the the, the fire brigade tried to like d- extinguish the fires, and they wouldn't let the fire brigade in. Oh no! So at at some point, this took like ages. Like when they were, were marauding through the city during the day, like the police weren't anywhere, and there were, uh, depending on reports, there were twenty to twenty five thousand policemen in Hamburg during that summit. Right. Um, like on duty, right? Uh-huh. Most of them on duty, and but Katie was trying to get out, and she was like, "There's like, there's like people coming into this tram. They smell like Molotov cocktails." So there were basically like people that were had worn black or something, then set fire and then just like changed their clothes or whatever. Wow. And Katie was like she got out, but she was like, Oh my god, this is really nightmare and she was like really happy that the police was like was starting to get under con- everything under control because like at least in like not in the Schanze but like in the rest of Hamburg. Because mm-hmm. there were like um friends of ours who said they were like in a bus and then the bus had to stop because somebody put a burning barricade in the street. And then people with hammers would, like, hit the bus, like, from the outside. Wow, fuck capitalism, like, man. Screw this bus. Maybe maybe if you're from Birmingham, this is, like, everyday occurrence. To you. <laughs> but, like, in Germany, we've never had anything like this. And it's not like Germany doesn't, didn't have its share of problems, like even with the left. I mean, we have the hardcore left terrorism where they were blowing up like newspapers and shit, like newspaper offices and shit, you know, in the 70s, the RAF and shit like that. Um, so, but this is like, this was like completely new. And the most amazing thing is like, this weren't like leftist, pe- like, it, it, like lots of reports say they were from all over Europe, like lots of Spanish people and shit. Like, right. they're putting Spanish slogans everywhere, shouting stuff in Spanish and, like, English and shit. And, I mean, these weren't, like, left people. I mean, my parents used to be, like, really left. Like, my mother used to be, like, really, really left. And these were people who were wearing, like, Adidas shoes. And, like, fucking... The people were saying that they, like, taped... They, they gaffer taped, like, the logos of their shoes and their sunglasses. But there were, like, obvious lots of people who were just, like, in there for, like, oh, looting is fun. And then, um, so at night in the, in the Schanze, like where they had 
burning shops and shit. Um, like the 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 police they had, like the normal riot police would go in, mm-hmm. and then they would shoot at them with like um, um oh god, what's the English word for that? Um, you know when, when kids build when they get like a, a tree branch and like a rubber oh. thing. Oh, 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 God, like a it's catapult. Not, it's not a thing. slingshot. It's like a hand catapult. But um, Yeah, like you, you got a Y-shaped yeah, yeah, yeah. Or twig. Yeah, yeah. That uh, thing. We... So yeah. then Those things. They can be really strong. They were like shooting like steel bullets at the police. Like ball, like ball bearings. But yeah. No, bigger. Like big ass, like, I don't know, marbles, basically. Made out of steel. So they would like shoot that at the police. And it was like apparently throwing like Molotov cocktails from the roof, so the normal riot police said we can't we can't go in there anymore. This is like they're basically just um, setting us up. And then ex- actually they called the uh, the special ops guys in, so they called the SEK in. And this is where you have pictures with like special forces police going in with like assault rifles, yes, like literal those, assault rifles. Those made the. Twitterverse very swiftly. Yeah, so, and I was actually read a report from one of the guys who was leading uh, one of the SEK units from Saxony um, who wrote that they were actually, they had gotten the uh, you're allowed to shoot order. Oh, wow. But oh, basically, wow. he was describing that once they went in, um, things were over very quickly. So they basically stormed houses. Um, mm-hmm. So apparently, they have special ammunition to shoot doors out, like mm. to shoot the locks. So they. Oh, yeah. They did that, then they would like deploy uh, pyrotechnics and <laughs> just fly the park. Yeah, like like this. What is this a fucking gig for? Like distraction <laughs> for like distraction and shit. So basically, like uh, you know, door to door fighting style shit, wow. flashbangs, whatever. And then they would just like handcuff everybody in the building, go on the roof because people were on the roof like throwing Molotov cocktails. But basically, he said they didn't encounter any resistance. So they had like people on the roof throwing Molotov cocktails. As soon as like the riot police, uh, as soon as like the SEK sh- shows up, they're like, "Okay, we're giving up." And she said, it "Took maybe half an hour, and then everything was pacified." So they were obviously ready to fight like the riot police. So there were people like uprooting like uh, uh, street signs and right. shit, yeah, and, yeah. like hitting the police with it, and just like, and they obviously hitting back like with you know batons and shit. But as soon as like the SEK turned up, everything they, they had everything under control basically. But this is like unbelievable. Like the people I talked to that I know, I mean, lots of friends in Hamburg, and they say this, they've never seen anything like this. This is like, like the police says they had never seen anything like it. So um, the mayor's like thing with it's gonna be over, you won't notice. I mean, that was like completely wrong. I mean, the the, the, the traffic uh, was stopped. It was all kind of shit. Like it's it's really bad. But like obviously the 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 summit guys, you know, Trump and everybody, they didn't notice anything. I think they thought this was fun. So these people basically they undermined like the leftist agenda as well. Because there were like hundreds of like a hundred thousand people or so like on over the days demonstrating peacefully, she got completely overshadowed by like four thousand like idiots basically. Yeah. And also like um this was like over like four I think four hundred and sixty policemen were injured. Whoa. Um I think they said they um they like detained about they said about two hundred and sixty people, I think. Um, they arrested about 80, but charged only about 60. So these people, I think most of them will walk free, especially if they're not from Germany, whatever. It's just like crazy. But then, uh, the good thing was, so obviously these weren't Hamburgers, like these weren't Hamburg people, right? And they weren't also like the Hamburg anti-capitalist guys, I think most of them. And the days afterwards, basically, Hamburg did, like, fought for its city back. So the very next day, they had this this hashtag, um, basically, Hamburg cleans up. Um, and uh, people were, like, hundreds of people got together with, like, even in the, in the morning, got together with, like, shovels and everything and cleaned up everything. <laughs> and um, it was really cool. And then, like... Um, so, uh, for example, on Twitter, the Hamburg City account, like Hamburg 
at Hamburg or whatever tweeted like, oh yeah, on Sunday um, there's lots of like museums are open um, and and free. And somebody immediately tweeted back, it's like, uh, Hamburg doesn't have time on sun Sunday, hashtag Hamburg's cleaning up. <laughs> <laughs> so they had everything, like people are saying like the, the Schanze because it's like this left, this like every, like district, it's never been really clean, you know, it's always mm. been a bit dirty because it's like all this laissez-faire kind of shit, you know, with the smoking and everything. And it's, it's apparently it's never been this clean. <laughs> um, everybody cleaned it up. That's that's cool. But this is like crazy. This whole that weekend that was just like scary shit. It's like weird. Yeah, it sounds super unpleasant to be in or near. Yeah, and the problem is like it's a bit of a political discussion now in Germany because um well pe some people are saying and I agree a little bit that we are like we're a bl bit blind on the left eye as they say. Because in Germany, in the press, it's always a lot about like like Nazis and right wing shit, but then there's like a left wing demo and like people that are even if they're not like left, but they're like from the left camp, if you know what I mean, right? Or at least they're hiding there. They're burning down like a whole district in a city, and everybody's like, "Oh, this is not the left, right? This is just random idiots." But and then people were actually like. um really mad at the police because apparently there were lots of like there's like police brutality because i mean the riot cops obviously if they have like people if there's like groups of 40 people running through the town burning down cars um you can like there's obviously videos you can see when they like catch up to them they basically just get the batons out and just hit them so much that they can't walk anymore which mm. I I personally think is understandable. <laughs> it's, it's better than shooting them. Yeah. I mean, the amazing thing is there was like riots for like two or three days and there was police with assault rifles, right? And mm. they had the order that they were allowed to shoot. Nobody got hurt. Like nobody seriously, no innocent bystander got seriously hurt. Nobody got shot. There was a single shot fired. And that's quite amazing. There's a video of this. This is like a a plainclothes policeman, which mm -hmm. is, you can't recognize. He's just wearing jeans and like a black shirt and a black backpack. And there's people like beating a guy and he's like on the floor. Mm. So he goes and tries to rescue this guy. And apparently like three guys with iron rods or something are like then coming, like chasing him. Because he's trying to protect this guy, so he like gets out a gun and like fires once in the air, and like rescues the guy. And of course, every at that moment, everybody like pisses off immediately. Um, yeah, one would. Yeah, well, which is really well done. Imagine like something like this riot shit would happen in the U.S. I mean, they'd send like the national guard in, and there'd be like at least ten people dead. Yeah, would 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 have been. A far more of a bloodbath. I'm actually quite happy with how the police handled that, even given that I know that the Hamburg police is like really, really hardcore. Um, I'm really surprised how well they did this. I mean, the problem was, I think the problem was that like most of these policemen were like tasked with um, protecting like Trump. Mm. So they weren't... They were actually like, on the streets stopping... Yeah, the, so, the they, so that's why people burned down like cars in like three districts of Hamburg with, without being sad. but the other thing is like if you have like I mean if you have groups of 20 like uh, people who are like obviously ready to like be you know hurt people burning down car I mean what what's the police gonna do I mean the only way you can stop them is like you get twice as many policemen and even then if you try to stop them like you'll just have to like beat the shit out of them and then like all the left people go oh police brutality like, hey, I mean, sorry, but if you're running, like, with a metal rod towards a policeman, um, if you then get beaten up, I, I, I think that's reasonable. Also, like, the demonstration, like, the one they took apart when it all kicked off, was called Welcome to Hell. Oh, what? That it was called awful, Welcome man. to Hell. And I was, like, on Twitter, it's like, if you call your demonstration Welcome to Hell, and the police comes along and turns it into hell... <laughs> You can't really complain, can you? 
Welcome um, to who, who thought that was a smart yeah that's branding what I thought. choice like i mean <laughs> What we're going to call a demonstration. Welcome to hell. What do you want? We want to make things better. I mean, these so were like, obviously, these were like the, the, the ones who, I, I believe them, who said we're going to have this demonstration. They were peaceful protesters. Mm-hmm. But come on, that name. I mean, you're kind of it's setting the tone here. <laughs> it's not good. It's well, not good at all. they made it hell. Yeah. <laughs> I'm still happy to move to, to move to Hamburg. My flat, the flat we, uh, we are renting, apparently didn't get burnt down. Excellent. So that's good. That's good. Good to hear. Hopefully people there have let off steam before you start pissing them off <laughs> on your arrival. <laughs> well, at least I don't have a car. Mm, yeah. Burn. That'd be shit. Yeah, that's uh, it. The, the, the insurance doesn't pay. Does it not? No. What? It's like vandalism. Like normal car insurance doesn't pay for vandalism. What I found really nice is like the public transport. Mm-hmm. Uh, Hamburg Public ten- Transport said like everybody whose cars burned on you get like at least a month free oh, public transport I thought that was great that PR well it, it was good public transport in Hamburg um, as as opposed to Dublin yeah well I mean there was a protest in Dublin so that's why it was shit then well not but... even that but we were like out in like on Friday night at like 11 or whatever the buses stopped running yeah, uh, to I mean, walk back to yeah. fucking rest mines. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, you could have got like a Uber equivalent. Yeah, I could have got a cab as well, but I was like, I was too cheap. <laughs> um, yeah. So we we went to uh, we went to Dublin uh, what two weekends ago? Yeah, and, uh, and oh, it's already it, two weekends ago. Bloody hell, we're getting old, we're dying. It was fucking good. It was good times. It was really good. Uh, Dublin's a really met, nice city. Dublin's great. I Aside from it, the public transport. <laughs> I describe it as London, but like smaller and not shit. A lot smaller. Like every, It's got all the things you want, but on a more manageable scale that's walkable from pretty much anywhere in the center. To be fair, it doesn't have the tube. Which I think is a good thing. No, I don't. And it does. And, and the tube's great. And it doesn't have the National Theatre. And the no, it doesn't have that. But it does have an excellent cinema where you can drink lovely real ale and watch Shakespeare live broadcast from uh, the Stratton National Theatre. Yeah, well, that. So when when uh, Ellie and I went in uh, January, uh, we went to uh, see some Shakespeare. Uh, that was being performed in Stratford upon Avon, which is a lot, lot closer to Birmingham than it is to Dublin. Uh, we can get a bus to it, and uh, we watched it from a cinema in Dublin. They're actually uh, showing that in the cinema in Hamburg as well. Mm, it's well worth going. Uh, we saw Prospero, the one with Prospero. Um, Prospero Burning? Yeah, not that. Uh, <laughs> that one, the Tempest, that's the one. I always call it Prospero because I'm thinking <laughs> of Pros- Prospero, Prospero Burns. Burning. Because yeah. <laughs> I'm really bad at Shakespeare. Fall of Prospero. Um, so we, we kind of like uh, met up with various indie people, people what make games. Oh, yeah. um, I felt very corporate. Uh, people like, what do you do? It's like, well, can't really talk about it. And also it's, uh, yeah, no, moving on. Um, so, but then they were like doing cool video game stuff. There was a guy who wrote Demons for, uh, for Larian and he's a great guy. Uh, it, was, it was really fun. Uh, that was in like a, the library bar, which I think was... Super nice, yeah. In terms cool. of, because uh, it's kind of like a pub but in a hotel, so it didn't have billions of people in it. I think I pissed people off. <laughs> no, <laughs> I think I think it went quite well. I think just by the end of the night, because suddenly it was like half one. When I got uh, into the feminism discussion, well, specifically <laughs> like the policies of Twitter. Yeah, we, it's like many beers in, it's like, oh my god, this is not the time. To oh, Feb starting. Oh it's like god. I have had too many beers to talk about Twitter's terms and conditions right now. Um, <laughs> but then the following day, we went to Sharon Owen's house, and it was great fun. And we tried to convince you the board games were indeed the purest of things. That was uh, that was cool. Yeah that, yeah, that was really fun. Gotta say, Owen made the nicest tacos. Oh yeah, he, he, he makes the best beef. For like hours and then pan fried it in a skillet, and I'm still thinking about it. Yeah, uh, I want it. Um, the Facebook so ads, the Facebook ads for sous vide equipment have started up again. <laughs> um, basically, anytime I log in 
uh, to basically anything that uh, ad sends me adverts that I haven't bought. Uh, it's just like, have you heard of sous vide? Not only that, there's uh, you can apparently sous vide coffee. You can do like wa <laughs> warm brew coffee. Oh god! So it's like cold brew, but not oh. cold and not hot. Oh. Uh, and I was like, oh, I will own this. I will make this my thing. Um, but then we played some cool games. Uh, we played. What was the first one? The first one we played was um, was it Monica's? We played first. Yeah, I think. Which I had not played before, um, but I had. It reminded me that I had kickstarted it. Uh, so it, Monica's is kind of like a charades kind of game. That uh, so if anyone's not familiar, that's the one we go like act out a thing, a topic, a TV show, a movie, a play, a whatever. Um, but it's kind of like refines it and makes it kind of just easier to set up so i have since played it in a pub in nottingham uh and i think i taught it very eloquently considering how many beers i'd had um, <laughs> basically you get given a stack of cards uh which are like things generally people sometimes just topics or memes uh so it might be like abraham lincoln it could be the sneezing baby panda it could be uh rick santorum uh, oh yeah, it, Rick Santorum. It, it could be a nihilist, <laughs> which nobody um, knew except me. No, I we, think. Yeah, you you had to jog my memory, and, I, and you were like, "All oh, right, okay." And then everyone else was like, "Oh, I don't remember this happening." Okay. Um, basically, uh, there seemed like a little bit of drafting. So people are going to pick the cards they think they can describe, uh, and then the game starts proper. Uh, you divide into two teams, and basically, uh, you one person has to describe the cards to the rest of their team. And they have a minute to go through as many of the deck, as much of the deck as they can, and then when that minute's over, they swap over to the next person. That continues to be one out of cards. You score points for doing so. Um, but the key things are there's like three rounds. The first round is uh, you can describe it however you want, but you can't say the name, you can't say any of the words on the title. Uh, then the second round is you have to describe the card so people guess it with one word, uh, which is fine. Uh, and then the last round is you have to act out in a Karna Sharad's manner, uh, which I find fucking impossible. <laughs> um, we div what was our team? Uh, we divided. Yeah, you it was... were really bad at that. I think we had uh, on our team. It was me, Ellie, and Shah. I was and really your team. Your team was uh, Mike, Katie, and you. And uh... I was really bad at the second one because I, I later figured out why. Because I was thinking of lots of things that are one word in German and two in English. Mm. And then I wanted to say them like, shit, this is two words. I can't say this. And then like my <laughs> brain locked up. <laughs> um, we discovered Mike is like the best at the acting round. Yeah, he's um, great. <laughs> like, really, really good at that. Uh, and yeah, that, is, that is just... Char's so really good with like just using her eyebrows. <laughs> she can just like... Uh, usually because you've seen the cards before oh yes that's the key thing it's always so uh, in, she, in, when, in an instance of a game is you're always using the same cards so after the first round in theory you've seen or heard so every card I think game. Char's thing is just make, making the same face she did when the original card came up yes yeah, so it's and like remember I, the face I did last time was like, I, ah. like at some, I think in the second game I was in her team right mm. and I guessed like two or three things just by her face and mm. you were in the other team. You're like, what? She didn't say anything. <laughs> like, how did she guess that? <laughs> so that was that was really fun. That I really fun, enjoyed yeah. that. Um, so much so that um, because the Kickstarter is so um, it's it's a box game. Uh, they released it. You can still buy it. Um, but shut up and sit down. The board game website kind of partnered with them to do an expansion pack uh, with some bonus cards in it. Uh, there was a Kickstarter for that, which one of the tiers, the one I ended up backing was, the core game and the expansion. Um, but I enjoyed myself so much, I decided I'd just order the core game again. And then when I get the Kickstarter one, I'll just give it to someone to be like, right, this is a really good game, have it. Katie uh, and me were thinking about like buying it, but we have like this problem that I think we, you, like you can't play it with Germans. <laughs> like it doesn't, doesn't work what? like you can't Why? like if you had trans to translate you know what i mean like you can only play it if everybody can play it in english like you can uh, play it speaking german yeah that's true yeah you could speak, it's english the on the cards and it's like, it, if it was just people it would be okay but there are 
like turns. Right, yeah, yeah. We were we were thinking about how it would work like cross generationally. So like you know we're all pretty similar ages, all on the internet and are aware of memes. Yeah, if, if, you, were, it, yeah. if you were playing in where we would normally play charades, where there's like teenagers through to grandparents, um, you'd have to curate the cards a bit more, which wouldn't yeah. be too bad. You could just sit there and sort through them because it comes with like a stack like of a thousand cards. But suddenly. even so, we had like problems because like obviously Rick Santorum. Like, nobody knew. And I don't know the baby panda. You were going on about that bloody panda. I have no fucking clue what that is. <laughs> How do you... It's the video of the tiny baby panda. I've never seen it. Fall backwards. It's the cutest video. I don't uh, like pandas. Well, it's not a red <laughs> panda, so it's not the cutest panda. And it's not an otter or a capybara. So it's like... <laughs> it's it's capybaras. En- it's entry-level adorable, but it's still quite cute. Um... So yeah, we were thinking about how you could kind of run it with that and basically just some curation, probably. Uh, and, I mean, this, so this... Uh, I don't think it's actually like a game they invented. It's kind of just a folk game. So you could quite conceivably just make your own of germ. Just take them, translate them. Ah, we should get together with Mike and make a Warhammer version. Ah, uh, see, that's... So as far as I know, there's, like, no copyright or anything. I think other people have made... Like, we wouldn't be... As long as we didn't call it... I don't think the copyright of the game because I, I think it's just like it's a game that has always existed. Well, I think so the problem with the Warhammer 40k version is not w- their yeah, copyright. Would, would, be the, would be the Warhammer thing, wouldn't it? Shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because there was the um, random aside, there was the uh, eighth edition army builder. Um, so back, like in uh, wargaming past, army builder <laughs> applications have always been like a thing that was used. So there was there was specifically army builder from was it Wolf Lair Games? Yeah. Um, that was software that you could use to uh, verify that your army list was correct. Um, and it had fan-made things that would let you verify Warhammer was correct. And that was also kind of always kind of like correct, sort of like allowed. Um, and then there's like mobile ones like uh, Battlescribe, which is really good, uh, which again have the fan-done thing. Um, I feel like since... Well, at least more recently, like online, like web service based um, army builders and deck builders specifically have become really, really popular. Uh, so for every Fantasy Flight game, there is a web, uh, there's a, there's a bit, there's a, a going to be a website run by the fans that allows you to build decks, uh, verify that they're like tournament legal or whatever and share them with people. So that's like for Netrunner, it's Netrunner DB. For the Game of Thrones card game, it's Thrones DB. There's a, other ones for Lord of the Rings. Um, there are various ones for the miniatures game, like the X-wing miniatures game from Fantasy Flight. That's there. They base they don't they have like have in the past had issues with the literally just it's not like the game name or anything. It's just like the specific card art. So they've had to have small versions of the card art with like watermarks and stuff. But they still exist. Um, so yeah, X-wing miniatures game, which is ostensibly a war game, uh, had uh, army builders and stuff. They're all fine. And then when Eighth Edition rolls around. We'll get into it. Uh, someone made quite a nice uh, eighth edition army builder, and it got like not cease and desisted. Uh, the guy who did the post uh, wrote, uh, made the website, um, wrote a little thing on it saying he wasn't necessarily. Uh, it would, they didn't actually throw the book at them and say. Yeah, I think he was using desist. graphics. I think that was the problem, right? But it was basically like, you can't do this. Please stop. Or we will have to take further action, which is kind of effectively the same thing, really. Well, it's I like think, not, yeah, yeah, it's threatening to throw the book at them rather than throwing the book at them, which is pretty much the same thing. But it was uh, like it was like because of the graphics, right? I thought, so I think the text-based ones, um, the battle scribe uh, or whatever that is, is, is well, okay. it's because strictly the battle scribe one is it doesn't ship with. So if you just download battle scribe the app, you can't make it do forty k. You have to go to like. A another so, separate fan run so website. So you think it that wasn't because of, of of the graphics? Uh, because that th- was what he said. <sighs> I think that's probably going to be the thing that they identify that they could do him with. But I mean, he would have had kind of the implicit games in the rules that he would be verifying against. Also, all the names uh, as we're going into a an age where all of the Warhammer names are now. Changing to make them more trademark. Call them Eldar and Imperial because Guard. The Eldar and the Imperial Guard, not the Astra Militarum and the. I can't even remember what they've. Eldari. Yeah, spelt with an A. It's weird. I, I'm not. 
I'm just going to go along with it. I'll just call them the Eldar for honest. Yeah, for honest. me too. Um, so I think I think it's just kind of like a mixture of all those things of just like them being kind of scared, which is really annoying because we, we're all been we've all been like, oh, Games Workshop turned over a new leaf. They run social media and stuff now. Yeah, but there were also people were saying uh, you don't have to buy codexes anymore. What? No. <laughs> Yeah, codexes. I think that, that was. Yeah, I'm I kind of okay with it. Kodai. I think it all depends on the price. We're going rat holding so hard now, but I think it all depends on the price of the codexes. Um, yeah, be- they're going to be really cheap because Games Workshop, well, well known uh, for. If you look at the price of the index, like. I think in days gone by, they'd have charged way more for the index. When it's when one could argue that that is the rules for like a fifth of all models. I don't think That's the what... codexes are going to be cheaper than the other older codexes. It's, uh, it's my guess. Re- I really hope they are. <laughs> You're hoping Warhammer is going to be cheap. Less expensive. I, th- I don't mind the models. The models can stay expensive. That's fine. Down with um... capitalism. <laughs> Yeah, capitalism is bad. Put your um, put on your black hoodie. But I don't mind because Space Marines are happening first, so I get to see lovely models and more things. And oh my god, they can make a multi-pose configurable Primaris squad for the love of God. Please, I don't... So this is the thing. Uh, you know, so basically up until basically now, the only way to get Primaris Marines was in the Dark Imperium box set which, frankly, I don't want half of it because it's heretical. I don't need the rules because I already have the rules. I don't need, like, range visors or that bollocks. I don't really want the box. I just want the fucking Marines. Um, and you still can't buy individual squads. Uh, what you can buy now is easy assemble packs of three models for the incessors, the other ones, and the other ones, uh, the hell blasters. The names um, are shit, by the way. And the fly ones... Um, the fly you, Marie. Oh, the fly ones is whatever. I'm gonna get those things. Um, so they they come in packs of three, and they're the easy fit ones. So uh, that is annoying because uh, if in the codex they turn out to be configurable, and you can give them different weapons, they won't have they won't be in that box. Um, they're just not changeable at all. Um, also, the minimum unit size for quite a few of those, I think, it's the hell blasters and the normal shooty ones, uh, is five. Um, but they sell them in packs of three. <laughs> So classic. The, the first time you'll have the correct number of models will be when you have 15 miniatures <laughs> and you're running them in three squads, which is a perfectly reasonable thing to do. But it does just feel like they're fucking you because prime numbers. Um, <laughs> yep. Ah, so that's kind of a pain in the ass, but um, I yeah, I don't know. I really hope that the codex comes out and they suddenly go, here's five man squads with optional different guns. Um, which would be super nice because uh, I would then buy that. Uh, they brought out the uh, HQ units. They've got captains and librarians out of the Primaris Marines, which are really nice. They're really quite pretty. I think some people think they look a bit silly, but I like them. Uh, they're like 20 quid, though. So. I, I figured out what my problem with the Primaris Marines is with the design. What, what, what? I really don't like the helmet. Mm. I really like the rest of the uniform, but the helmet should. But so luckily, you ca- can change that because yeah, it's the they same size. the helmet's the same size, so you can. Just I really it. don't like that helmet design. I quite like it. Looks it. Like Although inf- you, f- it looks like infinity miniatures. You like beaky helmets, so I mean, there's that. No, not only beaky helmets. I like the. You know what I'm saying is you got bad taste. Is what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> I'm inferring that because you like beaky helmets, you don't. Because know I'm it. not pure <laughs> enough, is that it? <laughs> I have some beaky helmets in my ultramarines. I'll have you know. That's good. Uh, They're the best. No, I, I, well, I don't know. Yeah, I think maybe they are the best helmets. I like them. They're good. Um, best, best, yeah. best helmets are helmets with hoods, God. of course. Of course, of course. We went on a massive tangent. We played some other board games, didn't we? You oh yeah. Played... Oh yeah. Charles um, played that Code... other that spy game, which I really liked. Code... Codename, Codename pictures. Codenames, uh, yeah. Which how how did you find that? I want to play that again. I voted for that in our like voting round. I really yes. Yeah, so we did that. our we did our democracy because um, you have the, you have like two team leaders, like and the captains or whatever, and I said you were shit. Yes. <laughs> and then you said you do it, and I did it, and I figured out you... that it's actually not that easy. Yes, to really do, hard. Even um... though I still think you were shit, <laughs> and I was I'm better. Pretty... I'm pretty sure uh, but I, I, I figured I'll described w- it in the past, but th- basically there's a set of pictures that are kind of abstract in front of you. There are two teams. Each team captain has to 
describe the pictures that they want their team to guess without uh, making your team guess the opposing team's pictures is the core of the game. So you have to like clearly say, and in, in one word and then a number. So, like okay. petals three. Three things yes. with petals. So there this are three is things why, on the board that are like petals. Why Dave is an idiot. So there were two clearly two things with petals. And the third one he meant was like a, a Tinkerbell fairy. Basically tink Tinkerbell fairy. Which And you were thinking of the wings, but they're like fucking butterfly wings. And, and afterwards he's like, they look like petals. And they're not petals at all. You don't know what petals <laughs> look like. <laughs> and I, I was like, I have to do this. And I figured out, so my mistake was I was being too abstract. Yes. I was like, what did I say? Like existential dread 2 or something? Shit like that. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, which, no, to be fair, one of them I got really quickly because it what, was like... What was it? Ah, uh, um, oh, what did it I... Was, it was like... Um, um, uh, I know the one you're thinking of because it's basically like the... The like, one that was like like Microsoft. uselessness or something. Yeah, useless, and it was basically like Windows or something. <laughs> I'm trying to yeah, something. it was like it, it was basically I was like um, yeah something like uh, some some I used like really abstract words, so that was my mistake. That's why that's why I wanted to play it again because I wanted to do it like again and then not make that mistake. Yeah. Futility. And yeah, so wasn't it futility? Yeah, it too? was futility. <laughs> One yeah, was like fun. a Windows error bar or whatever. Yeah, it was like yeah, it was a Windows error message. Uh, and I, I got, got that, that pretty much straight away, but then yeah. the next one we just like, fucked up on. Also, uh, like um I could tell so I was in a team with you and Char. Right? Mm -hmm. I think. Mm -hmm. It was that thing when I was the captain and Char was like, What the fuck? And with two and or three things, you were like I think it's because we've been doing the podcast. You were yeah. like right on my brainwave. You knew exactly where I was going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, ah, that, yes, I know what that means. That was me. fun. We it was good. It, it was, that was, we only played one round of that, didn't we? Yeah, yeah. and then we played, I think, Monica's again. We played Monica's again. And uh, then we played Deep Sea Adventure. We played Deep Sea Adventure, which, which I think is shit. That is a shit you, game. <laughs> oh no, no, so this is no, this is no. You're wrong because it's like elegant board game design. Ah, oh, it's so good. You just you like were just grumpy because uh, so Deep Sea Adventures is basically a game of uh, roll and move, but kind of uh, risk versus reward, uh, gathering treasure as you're uh, like swimming out from a submarine. Uh, gathering treasure, like when to return and store your treasure versus when to keep going at well, the risk of first, dying and losing it. I was pissed off because the law doesn't make any sense. There's there's massive uh, lunar <laughs> narrative dissonance. Take a drink. drink. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> massive, yeah. Um, but then uh, we revealed that when you roll, you roll two d three. Uh, so that's a three. Oh, yeah, that, three oh. It's the three-sided dice that you roll two of them and you add them together. But because D three suck, um, it's it's actually a D six with what, two ones. No, two I twos, wanted D threes. Yeah, I, I know, but they're they're, they're, they're kind of shit. This is wrong, Dave. This is not pure. You can't <laughs> like if you if you need D three, you just use a D three. You don't use like a fucked up D six. <sighs> I not mean, pure enough. Yeah, and I mean, also, I <laughs> also Owen, who yeah. I, you know, I've met um, Ellie and Owen, I've never met before. Who's mm -hmm. Owen is a really nice guy, very intelli intelligent. He's a fucking prick at this game. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus yes. Christ! Yes, so am I actually. Um, I'm always egging yeah, people on to go Yeah, but you're deeper. nice. He's also nice, but he's just better at being a prick than you are. Yeah, I'm too nice. Ugh. Also, um, so when we were doing the democracy for uh, voting for which games, I'm pretty sure we described it, but it's basically like everyone gets three votes and they get to vote for whichever game. Whichever game gets the most votes um, wins, and like we play that game. Uh, Owen beforehand suggested we all just get blankets and read as a game, <laughs> uh, or we all uh, make some <laughs> apple pie. <laughs> uh, uh, I think Ellie, Ellie actually ended up voting at least once for uh, the reading uh, and I think Owen then just like wrote on a big piece of paper um, 
for one of them, which then led to the query of like in in our overly complicated board game democracy, is it actually <laughs> the total number of votes that matters, or is it the length of votes when put in a line? Uh, because we had not established, um, you know, the parameters of democracy. Really, <laughs> and establish the pr parameters of the board game democracy. This is how this is how the mo board game democracy falls. Uh, yeah. No. So um, uh, I, it's like the Weimar Republic. The the, 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 the the parameters weren't weren't worked out well, and then suddenly Hitler. <laughs> oh my God! No, not not board game Hitler. Board game not Hitler rules lawyering us to death. No. Um. So random tangent time. I think. Uh, Previously, I mentioned I was reading a the, one of the Alistair Reynolds books, uh, whichever the one was, the fourth one, um, Absolution Gap. Um, That's a shit now, title for a book. It's, it's, it, it, it literally does have one of those moments in it uh, where you're like, oh, and then that's the title of the book, the <sighs> thing they just said. Um, it's like a name of a bridge. Uh, it's stupid. It's a really ridiculous title. But he's always got like the two kind of punchy names. But whatever. I'm reading the well, next the one. Well, Expanse does that, but they never. It's never well, really it's, clear. It's, it's never as obvious as the um, uh, Dresden file books, which are always like something, something, storm chaser, blah blah blah, summer night. And then there's the one like well, Abaddon's Gate is pretty much you know where that comes from. Yeah. Yeah, but like the like one of the books where something there's this big change in in the uh, Dresden file books is like it's got a different title format and you're like whoa whoa the title's <laughs> different mind blown uh, boom um, but in this like um, there's lots of basically it's like far off in the future where everyone's sort of like plugged into the internet constantly and it's like hyper democracy where there's only one actual crime and that's preventing people from voting or meddling with voting. Everything else is like there's multiple just like because people like plug into computers. There's like votes every second on just like every issue. <laughs> God, that's horrible. Um, and it it's how that kind of goes badly, as far as I can tell. But I started reading that. Goes um, badly. That's immediately badly. It's immediately bad. It's just like fucking Twitter <laughs> democracy. Um, kind kind of yeah. Um, yeah. It doesn't necessarily go. Super well. Does it um, go bad Barry... because Donald Trump wins? <laughs> <laughs> but oh, it's just kind of because basically I'm at the point where so one of the characters is like, "Oh man, this stupid democracy leads to some really stupid decisions, and people shouldn't be trusted with power." And then that's his plot arc um, <laughs> of trying to stop that. Um, but in the meanwhile, um, just to follow up on a thing Barry Williams said in an email last time, and also mentioned before. I think, yeah, it was that I should read the Three Body series, the sort of Chinese yeah, yeah. thing. I, I've read half of the first book and I really fucking hated it. I really? bloody, I so everybody I, tells me it's really good. I'm halfway through and I got no fucking clue. What's happening. Like I've got so I I know what's happening. I know there's a secret war, but like I'm halfway through the book. I don't really know is who's it, fighting, where they're fighting, what they're is fighting. Is this one of these things where you just read it and your brain just goes da 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 da? -da. Yeah, a little bit. And also, <laughs> it has it has the thing where you're like, oh. sorry, you cut out. Are you still there's there? A, there's a thing where there's a there's a the, there's a game in it, uh, oh. like online called the the three body problem, and you're like, oh for fuck's sake, I'm tired of the book. But I just. <laughs> It's just so it's a shitty title for a game as well. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. Almost, almost uh, as bad as uh, the kind of divinity origins into the kind of initial perspective character who I quite like then proceeds not to be the perspective character about uh, ten percent oh. in. You're like, oh well, there, there's this dickhead who's <laughs> just having an unfun time, and like it's, it's, it's loads of things with just people asking. Oh, I can't possibly tell you the answer to that. Just get on with it. Just fucking get on with it. <laughs> so instead, I read uh, Master of Mankind, book 41 in the Horus Heresy series. The Emperor Speaks. Oh, it's so fucking good, man. It's so good. Oh, it's, the... it's really good. You should really read it. The it's Emperor just... says, Gilliman, you are not pure. Stop <laughs> uh... messing with my gene seed, son. I am your father. <laughs> I, uh, the Empress dickhead, man. The Empress yeah, massive no. mob. Uh, and it kind of it is 
unquestionably true that he's just a bell end. This is why uh, he and the lion get along, and <laughs> Gilliman is just fucking off with his Imperium Secundus. Um, I would, I would. So if you've read um, the one with the Prospero Burns, yeah. uh, if you read a thousand Sun and Prospero yeah. Burns, just totally just skip straight to this. Really? Yeah. Okay. Maybe the go first... back and read. Yeah. Maybe go back and read some of the other ones, but it's like would really you, good. Would you suggest I first read Master of Mankind or Dark Imperium first? I uh, read Master of Mankind okay. um, first because it's going to outright it's going to clear up a couple of things that i was like i was aware of because i'd seen spoilers on the internet but when they got referenced in dark imperium i was like huh um i'm going home because i need to work on the webway basically yeah it's, Horace, it's... take care of everything i trust you what could <laughs> possibly go wrong Oh uh, shit, it's Magnus talking to me. Everything's falling apart. Magnus, what have you done? Basically, so it's the yeah, it's the <laughs> impact of Magnus fucking it all up yeah. and then how that gets resolved. Because he uses the uh, cosmic phone <laughs> to <laughs> ring the, the com- emperor while he's on the toilet. <laughs> yeah, it turns out using the cosmic phone is a very bad idea. <laughs> what are the you cosmic- calling me for? I'm on the golden throne. Turns out using the cosmic phone is analogous to like just kicking down the stall toilet, like the toilet stall door. <laughs> Where the emperor's in there. Yeah, it's not good. Doesn't go well. Uh, I'm sending anyone. the space wolves after you. You used to stop me on the shitter. <laughs> <laughs> A little bit. Um, yeah, so those that, that was my kind of book things that okay. happened that I thought I should give you back on. I think I'll, I'm taking back. your. Um, yeah, Master your, Mankind's really good. Your recogni- uh, uh, your. your um, your suggestion there, because I'm also, like fatigued looking at the list of books. I yeah. Just, it, also, I, if, you, I just if you're getting up. if you're getting bogged down in uh, just like not a lot happening, it it like progresses the story a lot. I'm, I'm getting bogged down with the webway. That's what happening. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that, it's it's one of those books that like definitely advances the plot, uh, which is which doesn't a, happen often in the whole series. Either. No, uh, which I think the next interesting one after that. Red, which follows on from a thousand suns. Which which, which one's that? Sorry, I think it's called. Ma- I think it's called Magnus the Red. Oh, Magnus I think the Red. It's, yeah, book book forty four. I think it's probably the next one that I read because uh, it seems legit. More kind of how the thousand suns <laughs> end up fucking up everything. Magnus uses the then Araman uses the cosmic phone and everybody turns it to dust. Yeah, it's like ring ring. Hello, Zinch. Yeah, can you <laughs> fix, can you fix all my soldiers? It's like. Yeah, I can. I got your back. Oh, wait, uh, they're all robots Have I now. told you the the thing I read? I don't know if I said this on the podcast, but I read like this, com- you know, for, uh, what's that, 4D, 4D6 chan or whatever that is? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There, this is the, on the page for Slanesh. They have like this comic with this like this, um, this corn bird eater guy or whatever. He goes into Slanesh's realm. Mm-hmm. Um, and she's like, Slanesh, where are you? And then, like, Slanesh turns up, and then at some point he gets frustrated with uh, with Slanesh and says, Ah, fuck yourself with a chainsword. And then Slanesh <laughs> goes, like, I'm noting this down for after lunch. <laughs> and then uh, somebody made, like, this thing where he's like, Slanesh, where is my chainsword? <laughs> <laughs> uh, That's good. I love that website. Yeah, it's, it's great. It's ridiculous. They've got, they've got good summaries of like 40k plot lines. <laughs> mm. I think uh, it's nice segue onto the I have done played some Warhammer 40,000. Yeah. Edition. Um, just, just I just wanted to say we had a great weekend in Dublin. Like mm. Katie thought it was a really nice city as well. And yeah, it was kind of our unofficial like 10 years of six gun production celebration. Yeah, I think it turned it out really great. Well. You went to the Fumbali as well. The yeah, best place. The Fumbali. It's so good. So um, good. We found a Katie and me found a place that we like better though. Oh, it's it's, it's this Farmer Browns or whatever. They have the bre- best breakfast ever. Oh. Yeah, I saw photos of that breakfast. It looked God, pretty that fierce. Was amazing. And uh, yeah, that, it was really cool. It was really nice to meet Ellie. And mm-hmm. uh, she she's is, little. she is like she's she comes across sometimes when she gives you shit on the podcast. Yes. She is she's Dave's better half literally because mostly <laughs> she's right. <laughs> uh 
Uh, I like yeah, when she yeah. when she's heckling you in person. That was so, that was yeah. Fun. No, yeah. You think that like oh, it's different with uh, her being on the podcast, uh, just heckling me in the background. No, no that's just like no. normal. Yeah, it's like I'm just wrong. I just get corrected. Chat shit, get corrected politely. Um, but yeah, I chat some shit to my opponents. No, uh, eighth edition. So on the weekend, I had a ridiculously nerdy time. On the Friday evening, I went up to Manchester to see Yui and I watched some amazing wrestling. Um, and then went down to Nottingham for uh, Regular Features Live. That's a podcast thing, uh, which I will get to in the feedback. Um, and then on the Sunday, I went to Warhammer World to play some Warhammer. I'm really envious of you, you asshole. <laughs> it was a really good weekend. Uh, I was... Incredibly hungover on the Sunday. Uh, so I started off the day with uh, bacon and, and uh, maple syrup pancakes for breakfast from Bugman's. That was really good. Oh, that sounds great. I had some coffee too. That's really, really good. Like I, The prices are still like pretty relatively low for a lot of food. I was, so trying like, to, I, I was just, I just want to live in, in Bugman's. It's really good. God, if I, I was working at Games Workshop, I'd oh, be there man. like every night. It'd be horrible. I would just be even fatter uh it would I think be i amazing. couldn't work there because i'd be like just getting drunk in buckman's and then people <laughs> would just, just like <laughs> would, 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 no i don't think that would be a problem then but then uh, people would just start pumping me for information and buying me yeah, beer, true. and yeah. i could probably resist for like two and a half rounds <laughs> and like well actually what you don't know is like the answer <laughs> actually the uh, gilliman is horus <laughs> Oh, seriously, this is this is what uh, what Laurie uh, wrote before he left. This is why he <laughs> left. This uh, Horus. It's, it's true. <laughs> That'd be fucking great. Um, so yeah, I played I played uh, some Eighth Edition and some Shadow War Armageddon, which I mentioned previously. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Shadow War played a couple of games off. That was really good. Uh, I had my Grey Knights. Uh, I won one game, lost Tava. It was it was fun. It was. Um, what did you play? Uh, I played Ben and Tom. Uh, I, that's Icarus, Ic- Icarus, right? Icarus and, and Tom Williamson. Um, and so yeah, I thought Shadow War was cool. It's kind of as far as I can. tell, It is basically just um, Necromunda, yeah, um, but with different armies. Some of it doesn't make sense. Um, so say uh, basically, if you lose a certain amount of your force, you then have to roll. Basically, a morale test every turn. To see yeah. if you got to, you see if you to roll away. a d6 that looks like a d3. <laughs> <laughs> that kind of makes sense if you're all just like gang lads. Um, but if it's just like you lose some of your uh, chaos cultists uh, and then your space marines run away because they lost some cultists, it doesn't really make <laughs> much sense. <laughs> um, but then I had my so I had my grey knights, so I had uh, well, they ran away all the time, dude. Fucking they never, they, ne- they never ran away because I sort of just hid, uh, basically. Uh, and I had a Terminator with me as my specialist, and that went quite well. We were playing uh, on the what's it called? Uh, the, the cities of not cities of death. Uh, yeah, the yeah. Zomortalis Zo board. So it's the one that's kind of corridors. And Can stuff. you imagine like a to- Terminator in like like street to street fighting? You know, like in <laughs> Hamburg. He's just like stuck terrifying. in. I'm stuck in the doorway again, lads. He's <laughs> <laughs> just stuck, um, but doesn't so matter it, because they can't get like nobody can move him. Like the enemy, they can't get through. It's like yeah. uh, the uh, thumbnail is really good because um, it's kind of like a lot more, like it's less killy. When you get hit, you don't necessarily take a wound, but you do fall over. Like you're downed. <laughs> like you like it's like a turtle. I can't get up. But the good thing, the good thing about the Terminator is that it doesn't get knocked down, so it's pretty beastly, and it's got like a nice armor save and stuff. So that was really fun. Played a um, multiplayer game where you have Prometheum in the middle that you have to sort of steal and take back to your base. Uh, but it, that just ended up in brutal just destruction and people like just sides getting annihilated. It's basically like win the objective or be the last person standing. Uh, and last person standing is basically how we won those. That was really good. Um, I thought it was kind of like basically like, there's lots of modifiers to rolls. So like there's like a base chance to hit, but then it gets easier because you sort of were on Overwatch, uh, but harder if the enemy ran or are in cover. And it's just like a bit of a ball lake like, just to do the mental maths. I think it's so Ben could do the mental maths really easily because he's like 
plays lots of Warhammer based games. Uh, so he's used to just the D6 kind of maths of it all. Whereas I was like, oh my God, what the fuck's happening? Um, close combat is kind of cool. I quite like the mechanics of that. Um, basically, rather than having a number of, ta- like four attacks, which could in theory give you four wounds, it's basically like four attacks means you get to roll four dice and then you pick the best oh, result, yeah, yeah. which uh, felt kind of cool. Uh, and then you kind of do wounds. Equ- uh, you do some, again, some more plus and minusing depending on like if you charge, like, you know, sword, you know, if you've got a sword, you can parry so you can like change a die or whatever. It's kind of got some fiddly bits there. So I just thought it was kind of quite fiddly. Um, and it kind of tells that it's an older game system when compared to like 8th edition, which is super streamlined. Um, I played against Tom. I uh, just played one game of that. We did a 500 point game. We decided not to go for um, uh, power level, basically because everyone else seems pretty keen on just using points. And if well, everyone else wants to use points... Everyone then... except Joe. <laughs> well, I think I see lots of people um, arguing for it. I've seen uh, people arguing that like... You know, a melter gun might be X number of points, but it's only really effective against like these targets. It's not effective against these targets. So you can't necessarily be that granular to describe how well an army does against everything is just impossible. Um So what but, what did you play? Um we just we didn't we just kind of played like a intro game kind of thing. So what army did, did you play? Oh I I took uh Ultramarines. Of, uh, of course you did. I took uh, two squads of Stern Guard, uh, five man squads, because that's all I had at the time uh, assembled. Uh, each of them had a rhino as the de- dedicated transport. Are these and painted then, uh, yet? No, so they're yeah. kind of painted. The so and then two rhinos, so a rhino for each squad. You'll have to oh. tell us later how much you've painted already. <laughs> yeah, the uh, and then I took a captain because uh, it turns out you can't put Rabute in a five hundred point list and have. <laughs> basically anything else uh it uses like it's just robot new, it's like 360 points just for him so you can't really use like him and then like not even a squad i am um, the war master now <laughs> just more uh, pure and that was against tom and a kind of like a scion based uh astro militarum imperial guards thing oh, um, the um so uh like the yeah, called? the guys with like carapace armor and stuff. The like, Militarum Tempestus. Yeah, those kind of. Yeah, those guys. They're kind of cool. They're good. They have lots of shots, like a lot of shots. Um, and we, we again, we were playing on the Zone Mortalis board, but we took some of the terrain out of it so you could have some more open spaces uh, so you could actually shoot stuff. And we basically just played until we decided someone had won. Uh, it turned out to be incredibly balanced, I think. Um, it came down to uh, one character each. He had his leader, and I had my uh, Space Marine Captain. Um, it was really, really fun. Um, it, it's way more simple. The dice rolls are just easier to work out. Um, vehicles are a lot fucking easier to use. There's no bullshit about front armor versus side armor. It's just wounds. Um, it, it definitely, if you're going to go into it fresh, like, and not remembering all the stats, it's totally worth, like, just printing out an army list uh, because I had to thumb through the book all the time to remember the stats of stuff, like what had AP, blah. Um, it was it was good. Um, I thought that kind of terrain didn't necessarily lend itself well to my army in that uh, I don't... Ha- my, so I've gone for like a super elite army of uh, each of the troops choice. Well, their elite choices. The Stern Guard costs like 300 points per unit, including their Rhino, which is a lot uh, for 10 models. Uh, and I don't think it necessarily favoured that because I couldn't really ever get their shots to bear on things because they kind of just got brutalised and then just... Yeah, you just lose firepower really quickly with they're those. Too, they're too pure. Yeah, too pure for this world, and they got annihilated. <laughs> um, but the rhinos did good work because, like, Tom's arm really handle uh, the rhino deal because they're just tough generally i kind of like vehicles vehicles seem all right now i'd like to play against an army that is more set up to deal with vehicles um tom had some sentinels but they're kind of easy i didn't i didn't fully appreciate how badass space marine captains are and how good they are like they're good they're really good um it's kind of going for the age of sigma kind of buff thing so there's a theme in age of sigma of like units buffing other units uh, in a certain radius, and the Rabute will do it, um, but the captain does it to a lesser degree. 
units within, I think, 12 inches or six, pretty close, uh, get to reroll hits on a one. Um, and he himself has hits on twos, uh, which means that... Also, also, there's a ruling that a, a miniature that is casting a buff also casts it on itself, so it means that the captain himself gets to reroll his hits on a if he rolls a one. So that means... It basically always hits. It's really unlikely for him to not hit, which is nice. And he has a shit ton of wounds, which I kind of forgot. It's a weird thing that, like, this guy who looks ostensibly the same as all my other Marines, but he has a flag on his back that has, like, four times as many wounds. That's kind of weird. And I don't know. It's, I suppose it's, it's kind of how it's always. got an iron halo or something. Uh, yeah, so that would be the... Uh, that would affect his invulnerable save. Um, I think... <laughs> you nerd. I think, actually, in the... I think... In the law, it's like they're, they've got more of a will to live. That hit. <laughs> Wounds don't necessarily reflect. I'm ignoring the fact that both my arms have been blown off. Yeah, it, my will it, is strong. It clearly ref- it means that, you know, like, obviously tanks can take more punishment than lads, but some lads are just, just more willing to carry on. But there are lads. my space marines and they but shall know no really fear. fear. A space marine has as many wounds as an Imperial Guardsman, because surely a space marine should carry on far more than... What? It has as many wounds? That doesn't make sense. I mean, they're one wounds, aren't they? They're one wound characters. That's stupid. Yeah, but I mean, space space marines have better armor saves and stuff. Um, So, but it was was really, really fun. Uh, It was really nice playing a Warhammer World. They've got two Uh, hearts. They should have... Yeah, and they've got way better armor as well. It doesn't make any sense. Um... Warhammer Worlds is such a nice place to play. Uh, seeing as the last time I played uh, was on the floor of the student house, uh, it was really <laughs> nice because it was a really hot day. Uh, really nice being in a massive, lovely air conditioned building. Yeah, um, I guess they have um, fucking tons of air conditioning. Yeah, Otherwise, they, it would be misery. Yeah, they um, they are prepared. They know they prepared. The, nerd, the nerd sweat problem. Yeah, there was like no sweat. Like everyone was like pretty nice. We were there while there was a doubles tournament of 40k going on. Um, there was an uh, an amazingly painted Ultramarines army. Uh, so they kind of had like a little army on display. If you want to do between one of the rounds, uh, that people were like putting up their armies in a display case, so you could go like basically vote on which one looked the best. I think the one that won was just this incredibly painted um, Ultramarines army that had loads Fucking of Fucking free- Ultramarines. Fuck. His 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 mate had an amazingly painted elder. Well, that's better. It had, it, it had some super cool kind of like freehand like hexagonal shit going on. Uh, that was really nice. Um, so that looked really fun. That kind of like a cool thing to do. I think it was over the entire weekend though, so kind of less manageable really in the long run to do. But uh, yeah, so eighth edition is really good. Um, it kind of like was super easy just to get going. Uh, only a couple of queries of like how he actually did close combat and the mechanics of like oh god when do you pile in um charging is a lot simpler now uh you just got to remember that people get their overwatch shot before you even determine if you're gonna try to charge so like it's kind of okay you hit on sixes um but things like with heavy like flamers and stuff automatically hit but we didn't really have flamers um didn't get to try out the psychic phase because neither army had psychers um so next because time, too pure. Well, it's just because I didn't really have the points. Uh, I wanted to take something that would buff people, and I have a, a a Blood Angels librarian. But because I kind of painted it in kind of traditional librarian schemes, it's mostly blue with just a red shoulder pad. Is, I could kind of run it as that. Is Gillyman a psychic? No, he isn't, isn't he? he just, well, I wasn't taking Gillyman as well, but he's, I, he. I think just, he does actually have some psychic powers. Does actually. he just not just use bureaucracy? <laughs> yeah, he used bureaucracy and tied up your tanks because you failed to adequately supply them with... Spell! Ultimate boredom. <laughs> Gilliman recites from um, the Codex of so Parties. we, you know, we had some lunch and some beers and then some more beers. Uh, by which time I was feeling way less hungover because yeah, I beard up. It was great. <laughs> uh, so then we just potted into the Forge World shop. <laughs> uh, which, yeah. just to say... Did not go well for our bank accounts. Um, <laughs> we saw the Town Manta again, which is the most beautiful thing. Uh, cause it's fucking massive. It's about, so cool. a, about a grand, um, which is painful. 
Um, but actually, this this is a great thing about Brexit. It means fourth world stuff gets cheaper for you. Surely. For me? Well, yeah, like, the, the euro will become stronger relative to the pound. Well, or I have to pay fucking import tax on everything. <sighs> we'll find a way, Fab. We'll find a way. Uh, so well, I, I, Games I bought... Workshop will have to move to Dublin, and then everything's <laughs> fine. <laughs> I bought some I bought some Ultramarines, Fab. Uh, of course you did. I bought a uh, 30k Ultramarine standard bearer. It looks kind of cool. It's kind of got some cool shit going on there. And then I bought 30k Rebute. <laughs> what? You've got Rebute yeah. twice now? I've got Rebute. Double at raw, but two different ages. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's I, I, it's the first Primark model I've got. It is neither of the Primarks I said would be my first Primark that I bought. Because um, I didn't buy Lehman Rust just because. It's scary painting him. I would have no idea how to paint Lehman Russ. Well, you're scared had... of Lehman Russ, but not of Robute? Well, because I can, so um, it's just a thing about painting is that I really enjoy and feel competent at painting blue as well as red. <laughs> Bl- <laughs> blue and red are colors that I can get my hands around. <laughs> like I, I just I'm, like I feel like I understand like you know the layers and the colors that need to go on and kind of what looks good with it. And the same goes for red because I paint shit on uh, Blood Angels. But for, uh, like, Rogel Dawn, who doesn't have a model yet, like, yellow, just out of the fucking Well, Rogel Dawn's gold, isn't he? Like, well, yeah, Rogel Dawn's kind of gold. 30k, but, like, it would be gold. Yeah, I think I've got Khan, um, yeah. 30k. Um, white white was really tough, but the blue bits were really easy. Um, and, yeah, I just, Lehman Rust is, like, to, to get... Well, like, I've got be... Engren, but, yeah, sorry. Lehman Rust is going to be like metallic y kind of silver, but also grey. And I just feel like non metallic metals or something would be nice on that, but I can't do that. So I just thought, fuck it. Get Rebute. Have two of the same model. Um, I could quite maximum happily see myself. Smurf. Maximum Smurf. Uh, I, can, I can run the 40k version of him instead of the 30k version to beat that guy who's a massive dickhead. Um, and this, I could kind of probably use him as like a, a chapter, like uh, a, cap, a chapter veteran or whatever. Just like he's a cool model, I kind of like him. Um, he's really Roman. I've got to learn how to paint marble, which is a problem. <laughs> I have no idea how to do that. Uh, yes, yeah, so those just with fun... little red lines. Yeah, but like that it sounds awfully like freehanding, and that's terrifying. Um, so that's going to be like an interesting experience doing that. Uh, yeah, it, it was a really fun, really fun day. Uh, we're going to try to organize another one, get some more people along. Uh, Warhammer World was lovely. Eighth edition is really good. Like, I was kind of worried that I'd hate it, that I'd play it and be like, "Oh my god, this game's fucking bullshit." Um, but no, it's really good. Like, fiending to play more. Uh, so much so, I bought some more models as well to complete my fifteen hundred point army. Yeah. Oh god. Next year, I'm going to come over to Nottingham, I think. Yeah, yeah. I also bought some more Battle Foam. Uh, I'm pretty sure <laughs> literally, like, in one of the first episodes of uh, Angels of Death, we talked about my Battle Foam case, which took, like, four months to arrive. Because I'm pretty sure it got shipped from America. Yeah. Uh, well, it turns out Battle Foam now also have UK bases. Uh, I ordered some more Battle Foam yesterday, and it's arriving in the post tomorrow. Uh, so you mean you can fly over to Hamburg? And we can yeah, have... so like um, taking the stuff to Nottingham did involve a couple of my models breaking. Um, oh, some no. of the Green Knight's arms fell off. Like, there's no kind of damage to the paintwork. It's just um, I kind of used super glue in some places, and it just just snapped. So some of their arms fell off, so they didn't have technically have weapons, uh, which was suboptimal. So uh, I I kind of have the battle foam case now. I've just bought replacement foam. Uh, because it's the pluck foam and it's very much plucked to fit the stuff I already have, whereas this I just want like fresh pluck stuff, so I can just swap them out and take them along uh, with my three tanks that I currently have. Um, well, four actually. Um, I've gone. I've gone full <laughs> space marine fab. Send send help. <laughs> Metal boxes. Metal yeah, boxes. I can tell. Um, wow. So, so what's you, your you, what's your, yeah sorry oh yeah so yeah that's kind of like that's kind of it in terms of what I've done for k kind of playing wise um, I've kind of theory crafted some more stuff I've got my army planned I kind of got a couple of units it's all basically going to depend on how good Primaris Marines end up being because I really like the models but if I'm not going to end up playing with them I'm kind of reticent to buy and paint them just because I have a lot to paint now 
like a lot. Um, and I think maybe the, the most positive thing out of it is I kind of have got over my fear of playing with unpainted. So you asked if I had painted them all. Um, and basically, no. Uh, one rhino was painted. The captain was painted. Um, and is that then. the guy with the blonde hair? Uh, the guy with the blonde Post hair. Posted pictures of. Uh, it's the guy with the standard on his back. Okay. That guy. Um, and then my 10 stern guard that I was using, um, like their torsos and heads and legs and back were painted, but their arms weren't, and their bases aren't done. Um, yeah, there was one unpainted rhino, so kind of I kind of got over my fear of like, oh my god, <laughs> unpainted models, it looks terrible. When Secret's like, oh my god, I just played the game and it was secretly really fun, and it was nice, and it was good. Um, so yeah, I... That's kind of like sidling into my uh, Tale of Four Warlords thing, in that since we mentioned that we were doing it, uh, I've painted a little bit of Rabute. It's <laughs> just the butt of um, <laughs> yeah, I've, I've butt. actually painted some of his butt. Um, <laughs> that's forty. That's forty k Rabute. I've painted a bit of him. Um, his sword is kind of terrifying, so I kind of put him on pause uh, while I get my troops ready. Um, I've not actually painted any more of the troops. So I kind of lied there. What I've been doing is assembling more dudes. I've assembled uh, the other 10 men I committed to, the other 10 stern lads. I've kind of almost finished assembling those, but I ran out of magnets. <laughs> You're um, magnetizing everything, aren't you? I have been somewhat gone magnetizing crazy. Send uh, more magnets! Basically, yeah. So today I, I ordered some more magnets and they arrived today. So the Primark has decreed uh, more magnets. That every man must contain six magnets. Uh, no, I, I, six is overboard, uh, but four four magnets is is. Well, what do you mean? With, like the arms, right? It's it's just the arms. Uh, okay. So I I want the weapons to be interchangeable, um, because basically I want to get as many as many units of stern guard as I'm going to have, which ultimately is going to be three, and I don't want to have any more than that. Uh, so I don't want to be in the situation where suddenly, like oh my god, melter guns are shit. Actually, we want plasma guns. Um, I don't want to be in the situation where I have to like buy another kit and assemble and paint more. Uh, so I'm magnetizing the first 10 guys. Uh, they've got magnets in each shoulder, uh, so you can take both shoulders off. And then the hand they hold the gun in is magnetized, you pop the gun off, and you can replace <laughs> it with a different gun. Um, that, of that's, that's cool. Um, you can make them like a little bit poseable, but it does make them quite delicate. Uh, you basically have to pick them up by the base or the backpack. Primark, head. my hands have fallen off again. Kind of, yeah. It's a bit shit. It's not shit. It's just like a bit fiddly. Uh, so the next ten, um, I'm halfway there. I've got all their um, uh, sort of ones that are holding the grip. They're magnetized, obviously, because otherwise you won't be able to get things in and out. But what I'm going to try to do are you just is... playing with the magnets. Yeah, now I'm just like twiddling with the magnets. <laughs> Um, the other arm, the other arm is gonna. I'm gonna try gluing that on, probably with some super glue, so I can just freeze it and undo it if I don't like it. But glue the arm on permanently, and then just magnetize it. There, so you can just drop a new gun in, um, and not have to fiddle with that. So it's just, and it uses fewer magnets, because uh, otherwise you'd be ending ending up using sixty magnets per squad. Uh, <laughs> uh, and that's just not. It's not ridiculously expensive, but it. It's just a pain in the dick, to be honest. It's like, oh my god, I've run out of fucking magnets. Especially when you end up magnetizing tanks, uh, which is the other thing I did. Um, which kind of my, my, my proudest thing uh, is that I have uh, assembled a Vindicator. I picked the Vindicator because I assumed it would be... Well, so... Um, the two kind of gun tanks I'm going to have are going to be a Vindicator and a Predator. Uh, and I wanted to magnetize them to be also Rhinos. So if I wasn't running one as a Vindicator, I could have it as a Rhino. Um, just so I don't have to own and paint two tanks, seeing as the last Rhino I painted took uh, four years to paint. Um, I kind of wanted to <laughs> ramp up production. Um, turns out the Vindicator is a lot harder kit to magnetize than I thought. Uh, probably harder than the Predator. Uh, because as you start off with um, it in Rhino mode, so you know you've got like a Rhino. Everyone, yeah, knows, what a rhino, everyone knows what a Rhino look, chassis looks like. Yeah. Um Things that you need to make sure that you can remove uh, in order to uh, do a Vindicator kit is the entire front bit, you know, with the little movable eye, uh, the window thing, 
You can't glue that in uh, because the front of the Vindicator tank pops through there. Uh, you can't glue the lid on because the roof of the Vindicator semi slots into that. Uh, you can't glue in any of the uh, guys uh, in the turret sections uh, because, again, the roof of... So the Vindicator basically has, like, double armor everywhere, like thicker, bulkier armor. So you can't have to leave those non-glued. Uh, and also, if you're going to have... If you're going to bother to... If you're going to glue in the kind of access hatches on the side, which I did, um, because you could magnetize those, it might make it a bit easier. Um, you're going to have to trim off uh, bits that stick out. So there's the kind of ladder on one side I had to trim down. On the other side, there's the kind of like uh, bits that, w- w- if you imagine the door flipping down, would sort of like jam into the dirt. You have to trim those down uh, because you have to remove the roof. Uh, and then you can put in your top section, which is fine. Uh, in your top section, you've got a little hole for a gunner to pop out of, um, which is useful because it means if you haven't glued in the one on the normal rhino chassis... Fuck, this is like a fucking PhD project. Pop them in the top. That's fine. That's right. going great. This is really easy. This Side armor. Uh, side armor is kind of nice. Uh, just pop in two magnets at the uh, front and back. Bobby Dazzler. Really easy. Those bits were really simple to get going. Um, then... The kind of complicated bullshit um, start... Well, the most complicated bit, because this is kind of the uh, panel... Well, the only bit of magnetization is the front armor, which includes the gun. Um, So the front armor that includes the gun uh, is a problem because A, it exists where the normal rhino front should be, and B, because it, in theory, intersects with the headlights of the rhino, uh, which I accidentally glued on. Um, (laughs) You can't make it literally, it just sits just terribly if you don't put them in. So I had to carefully with a scalpel cut those back off uh, and then I magnetized the lights um, so that I could have one set of lights because screw having two sets of lights that you can put on the front of the Rhino or you could put on the front of the Vindicator panel because the panel overlaps where they should be. Uh, So you can whack those on. Um, And then the final bit, which I'm kind of not sure about at this point, uh, the only bit I haven't done yet is you have the kind of Vindicator cool shovel thing at the front, mm-hmm. um, which is like the classic image of the Vindicator. You've got the massive fucking man-sized cannon, and you've got like the big uh, seed shovel or whatever it's called. Um, that kind of clips on a bit. Uh, you have to put some things on the side for it to slot into, which is fine. Um, yeah, but it clips on. And I don't know how I feel about that, because I kind of want to magnetize it, because uh, but also, if I can get away with not doing that, that'd be easy. At so this point, to... right? Yeah. I'm just going to buy a fucking second rhino What's paint that? that I'm done already. That's what Ben said. It's an um, ultramarine rhino. It's fucking blue and has an arrow on the top. Done. Um, yeah, but that's like, that's like, that's like 20 half a quid. day's work. That's like 20 quid, and it's not half a day's work because it involves painting it. Like, there's you a lot bought Rebooted it twice. Don't. Get at me with the money. <laughs> um, yeah, it's just literally just like, I do not want to sit around and paint like four rhino chassis. Uh, next up, so yeah, so that's actually all the progress I've made in the full war. Uh, next up is the final squad of uh, Stern Guard. I didn't necessarily commit to those, but <clears throat> when I when I point costed out right. everything, let me I stop had. you right there. Yeah, that's all the progress you've done. Okay. I've started. Yeah. <laughs> I've started. I'm. I'm like the second furthest in the group, as as, <laughs> as from everything we've heard on Twitter so far. I've started with everything assembled. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. I, you already had everything assembled apart from that. Yeah. And I haven't. Apart from what? Sorry. The Heldrake. Well, the, I'm not counting that. Because yeah. Yeah. You're not counting that. Yeah. That would be a fucking nightmare. Um, so I've got everything I want to do assembled. Aha, because it's a hell drake, it would be a nightmare. <laughs> yeah, it'd be hell. It'd be hell to assemble. <laughs> Bad uh, jokes. Yeah, sorry. Um, so I, I have, I have almost painted one guy. <laughs> He's maybe seventy percent done. Um, we should probably pick, should put pictures in the show notes, right? Yeah, Maybe probably. You, um, I'll, I'll show you. I show. I'll. I'll show you a picture. And I'll put it in the show notes so you can look at it, and then we'll put it for the listeners as well. Um, so you need, like, you need to put, give me links to stuff as well. Yeah, sure. So I've got like this guy, and 
I had had I had already started with him, um, so the, the a lot of that was already finished, like the thing on the shoulder and the legs and everything. Um, I am really happy. He's got like a, a piece of cloth that I tried to make look like it's flayed flesh. Mm. And I was really scared of that, but I think I'm really happy with that. Um, all like the demon flesh. He's got like on the on the left shoulder guard. He's got like a demon coming out. Um, these are all from the Dark Vengeance set, and um, I'm really happy with that. With the look of that flesh. Yeah, it's looking good. But that's all I've done. <laughs> this, and this is not like I haven't like this, this is like four days work like four days of painting like all the painting I can get in like on a Saturday um, and I've got like as I said I've got like a move coming up I'm like in Australia all of October uh, <laughs> but yeah, so, then uh... <laughs> Mike has like assembled one mini I think yeah, that's true he's assembled a, a Primaris too and uh, Joe hasn't even started Yes, because he's got some other stuff he has to get done first before. Right, um, um, but we yeah. have a we have a, a fifth contender basically an unofficial fifth. We do, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll talk about that in the feedback. Um, but I'm really happy with how this turned out. But it's like this is like me, right? So I don't, as we know, I don't really play 40k mm -hmm. at all. Like I'm doing this as a Zen thing because I used to paint. Like actually paint with acrylic on canvas, and you have to think when you do that. And this is more like painting by numbers, yeah, yeah, kind yeah. of stuff. I... So it's it's easier to get like it's completely empty your brain, right? Think a bit about like forget about the job. Think a bit about word bearers and what you want to do, and then just paint. Mm -hmm. And this is why I'm why I'm doing this, but it also means I'm horrifically slow, like really really slow. Although I have um, built a wet palette now, mm. which works really great. And Katie, how's uh, how's the two thin coats going? Uh, yeah, I'm not like <sighs> like if you look at this, I'm I'm more of an expressionistic kind of <laughs> painter. <laughs> um, I'm not a too thin. Like I'm trying, but it's like. I don't know. Uh, Katie has uh, like I've I've I built like this uh, wet palette and I used um, like baking paper, you know, to put the colors on. King paper and the baking parchment. Ba whatever. Baking parchment, yeah, to, uh, at the top. And Katie's like, no, 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 this is not. Like, I was like, what are you building? I was like, this is a wet palette, and she's like, no, 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 we call that a like I think a wet cell or whatever in the lab. So it turns out like in, 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 in biomedical labs, they basically have things like wet pellets. Right. It's when they do like, I think it's when they do like DNA, like when they have samples, you have to keep them wet. Okay. Because if they dry out, like it destroys obviously like the, Oh, wow. The DNA. Like, you think, you know, you have like a medium and if, if it dries out, it destroys like the sample in there. Um, so there is a thing called parafilm, mm -hmm. which is like a it's called a, it's laboratory film thing, and it's like a semi translucent. I'm using that now. Okay, she, cool. she brought me some actual lab technology. That's cool. I've always found that the baking parchment kind of like frays into sort of papery. Um, yeah. I don't know what the fuck. There's, there's there's a term for it, but like the fragments of paper. Uh, and that sort of get, ends up getting in your paint on your brush and on your models. So, yeah, I don't really use one these days, but I probably should because my paint does keep drying. So I can recommend parafilm. So Wikipedia says it's a plastic paraffin film with paper backing. I'm going to put a link in the in the show notes. So I'm, I'm using this now. It's like it's like lab technology. <laughs> Whoa. Brought to you by the dark science. It, it's like it's, it's brought in from an actual, uh, you know, SL2 biohazard level two lab. It's like oh man, it's not, it's not, it's not cheap on Amazon. Yes. <laughs> Bollocks. Well, you're being married to a biologist to have some, uh, yeah, 
some perks. Anyway, so I'm 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 yeah, I'm working on it, but I'm slow. So I'm guessing mm. um either either I don't know, either Mike or or Joe massively catch up or you just winning this. <laughs> pure boys. Well, so, also I figured uh, out like I'm doing this like if you look at the way I painted this. It's like basically fucking harlequins. I like have this plan to make every one of them a bit different. Oh because right, because yeah, they're like ten thousand year same. old chaos space marines. So yeah. I have like the Harlequin fucking problem. Oh. Oh. That's yeah, it's gonna take a while then. Um, Meanwhile, you're painting like Codex Astartes compliant. It's great. Well, they're not. They're I, they're not compliant. Um, because I went what do you for mean gold. They're not compliant. Well, I wanted them to be first company, and then I. Start painting things gold, and I utterly just I got like six models in. Suddenly, I was ah oh, pissed. They're supposed to be white, not gold. Just, oh well, I guess they're gold now. Um, but they're gonna go better with Rebute, so when, it'll be oh, better. you mean the, the trim there? Yeah, like the trim is oh, supposed to be Robot changed the codex, right? Didn't you yeah, say it's like last... 11th company now, whatever. That's what I'm gonna argue is that these guys are just great, okay? So deal with it. Um, I was gonna say something about. Yeah, so yeah, I, I I realized that if I just add like one more unit of Stern Guard to what I committed to, um, which I should say, I, I posted on my blog um, the actual list that I'm committed to, but if I'm adding an extra oh, you did. Oh, I didn't see that. unit of Stern Guard, then um, basically I get to 1500 points quite nicely, which is a tidy size oh, cool. game. You have and pictures there too. Well, you have the, that's the captain, right? Yeah, that looks good. Yeah, I'll have to link that. I dig, I dig the captain. Um, yeah, it, I think it's, I think it's going well. Keeping up with it. Hopefully, I'll keep up with it longer than I kept up with my photography challenge this year. Um, but um, well, we'll we'll hold you to it. I like yes. his cape. How did you paint the inside of the cape? How, That's really how good. How did I paint? Why did I? Let's have a look. I Almost know. looks like airbrush. Uh, oh, so that is um, purple. That is one of the just purple base coat. Um, then uh, on top of that, do uh, the the blue wash, whatever that's called. Also, like the base, the base really nice. The base uh, that's entirely like none of that's custom basing. That's all just like built into the model. Um, yeah, well, and... I like the way you painted it. Oh, okay, especially. I, I also like you will kind of... have to like on the next banner. Yeah, you will have to make a banner where it just says pure. Yeah, I, I was it's thinking of like ultra, how yeah. serious should I do it, but like if there is another banner, uh, it will be getting just the word pure. just just do pure rum. Like, um, <laughs> that think... is too many. That is too many letters to fit on those tiny. The... Just writing ultra on it in my my derpy writing was hard enough. <laughs> did you do that? Did you do that with the uh, with the brush? I did that with a brush. I should probably use like a pen or something. I do this with like really fine pens. It's, it's yeah. easier. and then just do a thin coat of like. Um... Translucent stuff over. It. Love medium. There's like a, I think it's is it is it Radeberger, uh, which the slogan is like Purum Laudatur. It's like the slogan of the beer. It's mm. the Purum. <laughs> That'd be good. Or like on the on the shoulder guard, like the Purum Maximus. <laughs> oh, I've just noticed the fucking markdown doesn't work for my bullet points. Jesus. It also says I'm finishing my Dark Angels. I'm actually doing word bearers, but yeah. Shit. Typo. Secretly revealed that I might have done this drunk. Whoa. It's okay. So good. <laughs> yeah, your markdown's fucked, man. Markdown is fucked. I can't remember. What the f I like it, though. That picture is awesome. That is, looks really good. It's, Thank you. It's much better than mine. Fuck. That's because uh, I've, I've up my game. been painting... Uh, for consecutively more time than you have. This is the first time you picked up a brush in what three years? Me? Yeah. Yeah, probably. So it's like you were in Wimbledon, right? I think you're right. Well, the, the, you had the kind of like holiday, didn't you, where you put up some? Oh yeah, yeah, I did some. I did, yeah, but that was it. That was like the two times. You're yeah. right. I just didn't paint at all. Whereas I've kind of not stopped. F fuck me. <laughs> I hate you now. <laughs> um, yeah, because my Infinity models are also. Blue, so I've had practice at blue. Smurf. Um, where I in that my army is also the Catholic. Anyway, we should uh, we should stop with this shit because this is not actually the actual uh, fear failure no. update, which will happen when we have uh, Mike and uh, yes. and Joe on Mike again. and Joe back. Where were we? 
we were going to talk about Petya and oh, not Petya. The Petya. Have you uh, followed this at all? So I am aware. You're aware. Is ransomware. And that there was a thing where it was saying it was ransomware, but either... Sorry, you, be... you cut out again. Oh, oh. my God, my, my internet. Uh, it's it, ransomware that people were claiming didn't do ransomware. It just fucked up your stuff through a rookie mistake or something. I don't know. Right. So um, I think we talked on the show about Pitya, Misha, and Goldeneye, right? Mm -hmm. So this is like yep. the... You enlightened me as to the naming convention. Yeah, so apparently these are like massive like Goldeneye fans who did ra ransomware. And... Um, so there was this outbreak a few uh, weeks ago where um, it looked like it was Petya, right? Like, like it was actually like we're getting the news like in the middle of the day, but like in the morning, like huge, like major uh, corporations uh, all over Europe. Like it seemed to start in Ukraine, but like everybody was like, in, like there was Maersk uh, in Denmark, Bayersdorf in Germany, Merck in the US. Um, Racket Bankheiser um, in the UK, I think. Right. Yeah, yeah. So they were getting like, there are people on Twitter it's like, all oh, our PCs are like broken. And so it looked like a new version of Petya. And so it turned out that uh, this wasn't Petya at all. This was like somebody who made ransomware that behaved like Petya. So it kind of. Um, when your system gets infected, it tries to get like it tries to use some uh, Windows uh, vulnerabilities to get admin rights, and it if it doesn't get admin rights, it'll uh, it'll just uh, you know get whatever like basically a user folder and encrypt that, but your OS mm -hmm. will still work. Um, if it gets admin rights, um, it restarts your system, then puts up something like a check disk thing. Looks like check disk, but it, basically it's encrypting your whole hard drive, including your MBR. Yeah, um, I think it can't do that when you're doing like secure boot, whatever uh, uh, GP, if, GP, I, I, GPT or whatever that. I don't think it should be able to. If it can no, do it, that. well, it doesn't. If because it does that, but basically, yeah. if you have GPT, is it GPT like general? Petition table thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah, GID petition table. So that that still has an MBR, but that basically just says this isn't used. Like it uses the, the area where the MBR would be and says this isn't used. So it, it actually doesn't break it. Um, but like these companies that were infected, they're all like using Windows 7 anyway um, yeah. because nobody in the enterprise uses Windows 10 apparently, which is what I figured out as part of this as well. Um so it's like uh, so that broke out, but apparently, yeah, it's it wasn't really when, right, right, right. It wasn't Petya, so it wasn't people who kind of um, wrote something that looked like it, um, including saying like on the screen like you've been infected by Petya ransomware, um, and it like spread all over the world in a day. And it's like, what the fuck? How is this happening? So basically, uh, people figured out that. Uh, when one wanna cry, the wanna cry outback used this uh, SMB vulnerability. Yeah, and they were using that too, and they were using other stuff. But the, the, these these people were really smart. So where like wanna cry was kind of like configure back in the day, just spamming them, basically trying to find other computers on the network. It was just using broadcast pings, mm -hmm. so it light up your whole network. So and an admin would immediately see something's wrong. This actually uh, just found a domain server and then just got a list of like all the PCs like like you would do like if you were just a computer on the network uh, would just get like a list of, of, of other PCs on the network and then spread so it also spread like a worm and mm. people have figured out um, so this is like I think this is the first time this happened usually like ransomware spreads through phishing uh, and this spread um, via a software called me doc which is a ukrainian tax software so if you have a company in the in in the ukraine or you you pay taxes in the ukraine you use this software to file your taxes yeah it's like it's a, it's it's software from the government basically isn't it yeah it's not like it's it's 
in Germany, you have the same thing. It's called Elstar. I think in Germany, it's actually from the government. This is made by a little company, but it's like officially endorsed by the government. And so they broke into their servers and put their ransomware in an update to the software. Yeah. And, and then which got automatically applied, right? Right. And signed this with a fake Microsoft certificate. Lovely. Turns out the software doesn't check. Like it's one of these typical mistakes where like people implement that and then never fix it it's like it just checks that it is a certificate it doesn't check the mm. certificate chain like basic yep. rookie mistake um so i guess somebody knew that figured that out then said okay we can use this on their servers and basically it got applied to the software then spread in corporate networks everywhere and like encrypted a lot of p pcs now why people think so why do people think this isn't ransomware, but like a viper worm? Um, so Petya had a really, really, like these are cyber criminals, like the, the, the guys who did this apparently, uh, the Twitter account, they're called the Janus, Janus Cybercrime. Mm -hmm. um, it's also from GoldenEye. Mm -hmm. It's like uh, Electrovalian, like Sean Bean, the bad guy. He's called right, ja yeah, yeah. Jan Janus in the, in the movies, Ooh. in the movie. Um, so... Absolute nerds. Yeah, I mean, he's got the picture of like the Russian hacker uh, <laughs> from the GoldenEye guy. as his uh, as his as his picture, and then um, so later he released the master key, mm -hmm. and yeah, yeah. Um, so he released that saying like, um, what was it? Um, they open doors, but they're right in front of me. Like the hacker in GoldenEye, there, there's like a female sys admin, and he's like a total like chauvinistic asshole and he locks her PC with a password mm -hmm. and the password is knockers and like mm -hmm. the riddle says they're right in front of you but they can open doors or something like that mm -hmm. <laughs> so he tweeted that when he released wow. that they're complete like gold miners I love them the the best thing is like um, he, um, do you know Miku Hipponen yep he's like FCQ's chief Main researcher book. yeah and um so he was tweeting about that, and I and I tweeted him like um, they still have the best branding in ransomware, and tweeted that gold nine gif of <laughs> um, of uh, um, Brosnan just nodding like in appreciation, <laughs> and he tweeted me back, and I'm like I love this movie, and I tweeted him a picture of my uh, the Omega, Omega Seamast I bought uh, like I have because I love this movie so much, <laughs> and he tweeted me a picture of his back and says uh, I used to have one, I lost it. <laughs> Oh wow! <laughs> so that was cool. So yeah. So um. So I've been obviously ever since I figured that Golden Eye connection out. I've been just like fascinated with this, uh, and I've been researching this. And so it turns out, so this is probably not ransomware because, um, Petya, Misha, Golden Eye, they already 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 had really good like payment, like ways of getting paid, like kind of yes. essential for ransomware. They were actually like. They had an affiliate program where you could kind of buy like their soft like buy their ransomware and then like pay them with commissions. <laughs> so they had this all figured out. Now this not the people started calling it not pet, yeah. So this not pet yeah thing. Um like had a really stupid way of getting paid. Like it has a hard coded Bitcoin address. And also like because um, so basically you had to send them Bitcoin to this address and then send them an email to an email address that was also hard-coded to tell them, well, I've got this bit... Because like, if you send the money, they don't know who you are yeah. because they can't associate the Bitcoin vo wallet with like the PC that got encry encrypted. Because Bitcoin's anonymous. Well, pseudo-anonymous, but yeah, basically. Um, so you'd have to send them like an email saying, well, I'm this guy, this is my code, I send it from this Bitcoin address. Well, that hard-coded email address was like with a German provider, mm -hmm. Posteo, and they shut it down immediately. So... Ah. People were paying bitcoins but couldn't get the keys. It's not like they would have gotten the keys anywhere, probably because like they they weren't out to make money with this apparently. Because like like why why rip off Petya? Like they're obviously reverse engineered, and decompiled, or whatever. Um, you can kind of see that. You know why not rip off the payment thing as well? Like if you yeah. really wanted to get paid. Um, so it seems like they just wanted to cause chaos. People are saying it's probably like. 
you know, cyber terrorism, whatever. Maybe the Russians, because it started in Ukraine, would kind of make sense. Maybe the North Koreans, because they just want to wreck everything. I mean, this is like uh, the German Milka, the German chocolate guys that, you know, they they couldn't, like, produce chocolate for, like, weeks. Um, wow. I think, I think was it Toyota or some, some car company stopped producing stuff? things i mean buy stuff getting locked down buy stuff is huge like merc mm. merc are fucking they're like a conglomerate that you do like drilling platforms ships you know they have like one of the one of the biggest shipping lines yeah. um it's just like uh drilling and whatever you reach i mean that's just like just have gotta be billions of euros that got lost because of this um and also they rewrote the encrypt. So actually the most amazing thing was like the Janus guy who wasn't heard from for ages, the guy who wrote the GoldenEye family right. of ransomware turned up again on Twitter and said, basically said this wasn't us. Fuck these guys. Um, I'm going to see if I can break their encryption, which <laughs> he couldn't because like it's not based on his. Like they rewrote that. But he then released the master key for Misha, Petty, and Goldeneye, I guess, I guess he made enough money already. Um, or he can just write another strain. Yeah. Um, he released the master key. So now the real, like the real ransomware, you can actually like, which is what we've been saying at Heiser um, for ages. Like if you if this happens to you and, and your hard drive get in, gets encrypted, just put that in a cupboard somewhere. Be- because lots of these things get broken after time when like security researchers actually look at and then they figure out, oh, they made mistakes. Or like the key gets released, as in this case, and you can actually rescue your data. Mm. So that's pretty cool. I really like this guy. This is like, you know, it's like a honorable criminal kind of thing. Like, fuck them. I'm releasing my key. Um, mm. that, that was really fun. Um, but also like their encryption, apparently you can't break that with this. But there is hope because... Um, so if if this not Petya uh, thing didn't get admin privileges and just encoded your 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 personal files it used AES and as far as we can see that was done solidly and isn't crackable. But now if you if it got admin privileges, um it uses Salsa twenty, which is also like strong encryption, but they made mistakes. And you can actually do do a, a known plain text attack. So the the way they they wrote the encryption um, is faulty in such a way that, you know, you're encrypting a Windows partition, right? So there's always stuff that is the same. Like there will always right. be stuff in this partition, which, which oh, is... Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. So you know what, it's, it's, you know what it's encrypted. So you... You, no, no, you know what the plain text is and you yeah. kind of know what it's encrypted because you know where it is. Yeah. Um, so you, like if, if that was strong encryption, that wouldn't help you. But yeah. because they made mistakes, um, it is possible to crack this, although it's not, you can't do that automatically, so somebody can't write a tool. Basically, you'd have to send it to, like, um, you know, specialized data recovery people. And they probably would take a few hours. So it's going to be expensive, and it's probably nothing for, like, the the end end user, but, like, for a company, if it's really sensitive data... Um, yeah, this is kind of cool that that it can be cracked. Anyway, really interesting story, and I'm 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 writing about this. Obviously, I'm actually uh, giving giving a talk on this uh, <laughs> at a police academy place in Hanover. Oh wow! At okay, the so of next like, month. How how does how does that happen? How well, does... they rang me up. It's like this guy ring, uh, wrote me an email. It's like I'm like I, I I'm like a you know, I do like I uh, do training for like criminal police, and Whoa. I read the story. And we're doing like a training course on cyber, 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 uh, cyber. And it's really cool. We still have a war. slot. Would you like be willing to like talk for fifty minutes on this? Uh, oh wow! Like, yeah, I think this is a really cool topic. Or whatever. And then you rang me Whoa. up. So, so like, what are you? Are you going to be focusing on just what it is, or like? Um, I think they find it mostly interesting that. Um, um, like how this differs from being ransomware, like okay. what what this means. 
that like I think I think the most interesting thing for like I'm gonna focus a lot on attribution I think and mm -hmm. like talk a bit about how hard attribution is in general and how this like how you can't tell if this is ransomware or not really and how what mm -hmm. that means so that people can just like like if you really wanna like cause chaos but you wanna have misdirection as to you know, if this actually was a cyber attack by like terrorists or like a state actor or whatever, you can just take ransomware and kind of pretend to be ransomware. Like, and just imagine if they'd done this better. Like, if they'd coded mm. this like actual yeah, ransomware. Made rookie mistakes. And, and they would have like made a lot of money on this. Like, because you can trace with Bitcoin, you can trace how much money they made. If they had made a lot of money, then nobody would have even suspected that this wasn't ransomware. Also, the other thing I'm going to focus on is just like the the new thing with this is just like shipping this with an update to software that's trusted. I mean, the biggest problem, the big problem here was like that the software was running with admin privileges yes. uh, in networks, in companies. Um, yeah, that's and, baffling that like your tax software needs to run without. Yeah, if you actually have a look, lo lots of software does. It's like stupid because it doesn't have to. And Microsoft tells you it doesn't need to, but everybody does it because it's it's easier to code. Basically, I think. It's like you top, know, if top, you top. can, yeah, and so, th and what that means, like if if you can push that by uh, updates. And the other thing is, think about it. Like this was really visible, right? Mm -hmm. um, this was like a just smash and burn kind of thing, um, yeah. but scorched earth basically. I mean, this this has probably happened before, mm -hmm. but they they'll just have like infiltrated like spying software that just exfiltrates data, and you would know. Like this yeah. could have happened to like tens of ten companies already, like over years, and you would know that that's really scary yeah so maybe yeah, i'm gonna just gonna talk a bit about that and whatever the the scary thing is i was on the phone to the guy and then afterwards i was really nice and whatever and i like looked him up mm -hmm. and looked up his rank and he was like <laughs> this is like the, i think it was like the third highest rank you can get in the police Whoa. And I'm like, Whoa. fuck, this is like basically Commissioner Gordon or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> That's a hell of a thing to put on a CV, though. Yeah, it's, it's, I think it's going to be fun. I've never... Um, it's going to be interesting. Um, I've never done anything like this. And also, like, you know, just hanging out with, like, some criminal police guys and talking to them. That's basically why it's worth it for me. Like, I'm not, like, getting paid for this or whatever could probably be but it's like this that's just i do this as part of my job right it's also good for heiser because i can you know promote heiser whatever and then if i'm actually going to get paid i will have to like do taxes and shit i don't want to oh, do that, I, I, that i'm just going to do that for the fun you know it's in hanover i can just go there and then just yeah and i've actually uh this, this prompted me to look at uh, presentation software again yeah and i always want to use impressed js yeah, that's it's the one. Yeah, I've had a look at that, and I've just never had the need to give a presentation. Well, for me, it's like I had, but it's like a pain in the ass because you have to like write HTML. Yeah, and it's just like you want to get your presentation done. And I found something that's really cool. It's called Hovercraft. Okay, and it's basically um, it's uh, what's that RSC restructured text or whatever. Okay, so it's a bit yeah. like Markdown. So it's like a it's like a little service. It's like a th like a binary thing that like. You write um, like this restructured text. Is it called that? Uh, podcast voice. Just look this up on the internet. That's why they have the internet. Yeah, restructured text. It looks mm -hmm. very much like Markdown. It has a few more functions, I think. Um, and you just do that, and then you just execute this thing, and it just builds the builds the, the the impress js stuff that's cool and it has a built in like presenter console and whatever where you can have like notes that only you can see whatever and it's really cool so i think i'm going to use that also because it just puts out like html so like even mm. if your your computer doesn't work with the like you often have that like especially if you use linux and it doesn't work with the uh you know with the projector or whatever 
Yeah, you can just put it on whatever device. You can just get a, a computer that has an internet access, and then it's just going to put the presentation host, on. Host your slides on GitHub. Yeah, I'll just put it on the web space or whatever. Yeah, or GitHub, whatever. GitHub's a good idea, actually. And mm. then I can mm. just... Uh, do that. So that's I'm gonna I'm gonna try that. So that'll be that'll be really cool. Um, yeah. So that maybe you've you've learned something now. Yeah. If I, you, I if you want I, more I, into infosec stuff on the show, tell us. Yeah. No, it's it, it's good. Uh, I was not clear about it at all. Uh, I had no idea what's going on. I just love that golden eye connection. So good. Mm. Mad respect. <laughs> that's just awesome also I've been playing uh, just an aside you know how you always sign up with Hack the Planet yeah I've, playing, I've been playing XCOM 2 again oh yeah, yeah. because I basically saw the E3 stuff uh, new mm. stuff they're doing I was like I need to play that again and I noticed I had never had noticed this before but like um, you know how you can hack stuff in XCOM yep yeah, yeah. and when, when like they do that sometimes the guy says hack the planet <laughs> oh no way i had yeah. no idea <laughs> i was okay. thinking of you uh i i've been uh at, in the pub shah asked me like what i was playing and i was basically like oh god i just built warhammer um but since then i thought i should play something and seeing as eve still feels like a bit like a job uh i've been playing the new diablo 3 update um, oh, the necromancer thing. Which there's not much to say that hasn't already been said been said on the topic. But if you have Diablo three, get that update because the necromancer is fucking just so fun. Corpse um, explosions. Corpse explosions. Um, I feel like it kind of breaks the game. Um, I feel like uh, so so I feel I don't know. I'm not like a super hardcore Diablo person. Uh, I played through the game when it came out. I battled through that weird error because the service couldn't handle as many people as were logging in. Um, but I feel like because the necromancer basis, so the necromancer's kind of core ability is like summoning bones from the ground, stabbing people in the feet. Um, <laughs> it, you can cast the spell anywhere on the screen. Like no matter where you are, yeah, you can cast it wherever you can see. Um, so you can apply damage to literally just fucking anything you can see. Um, all the other characters, like, kind of need like line of sight or like need to be next to something i feel like that kind of just like changes the game in such a fundamental way that it just makes it way more fun probably more easier to be perfectly honest it's uh, i am blasting through it again um but i've not played diablo 3 in a very long time so there's lots of new changes they've simplified like potions and it's just a way better game than it used to be um i'm kind of almost at the end of I'm like on the final stage of the core game. The voice acting up... and that cracks me up. That's the only Stay thing that's a while and listen. It's it's more, more over the top than why I'm a fucking oh, cube, yes. I might be a yeah. Um I I fucking love that just everything. Uh it, I got to the bit What? Um, Your name is Robute? What kind of a name is that? That's way too normal for this world. Um, there's the, the cutscene, best cutscene in video games. Uh, it's the one where uh, Tyriel, Tyriel, the angel lad, has a flashback to him leaving heaven. Oh, you mean it, Sanguinius? Oh, God, it's so good because he rips his wings off and he's like, oh, man, it's all about Pete's. It's all about, you know, justice for the many, not for the few. Uh, it's so good. It's just so... Oh. Like I, I made the offhand comment on Twitter that like if video games burning and I could save one thing video games, it would be that cutscene. And I'm not even I'm, yes. Like that was a joke, but I'm think I'm serious about it now. Fuck and, you. I'll find uh, I'll find I'll find the um I'll find the cutscene. It's moving, man. It makes me feel things. The best cutscenes in video games have Kane in it. Terrell from Sacrifice. Command and Com- Conquer. Oh wow, God! YouTube knows I've watched this video a lot of times. This came up you know, Kane quickly. doing that thing where he where he does that thing with his fist. Mm-hmm. That's so good. I'm just watching. They yeah, told you I was dead. No, no, for the Brotherhood of Nod. <laughs> oh. <sighs> oh God, the the cutscene, man, the feels. Uh, we should get on to the feedback. Rather than me watching things from Diablo 3. Um, 
we okay, had. I'll, uh, I'm, I'm just looking at that now, but I'll, I'll find my favorite. Um... Yeah, if you post a link to that too, so yeah. people can like have some fucking context of what we were just talking about. Um, so yeah, I will start with. Oh yeah, I've the... se- yeah, I've seen this because I've been there. Yeah, it's, it's good, I've isn't it? It's played, really good. I've actually it played, feel... played that far. Yeah, yeah, it's too tight. It's not actually that far in, to be honest. Uh, spoilers, spoilers. Uh, I talked to Philippe uh, Whitley. I can't not. Philippe Whitley. Of... Yeah, so I, I told him that like, I whenever I see or hear his name, I just translate it into you saying it. Um, he was like, "Oh man, I love the podcast, but you always spoil everything." Um, so spoilers uh, in Diablo Three when Decker Kane dies. Uh, at the end of the what he says, he says I spoiler too much. Is that it? Well, because we we'll, we'll, he said that we both just like talk about the expanse, right. and he's like, I've not watched season two of the expanse, so I have to. Yeah. This is a spoiler um, cast. Spoiler cast, twenty four seven spoiler cast. Um, yeah, in Diablo three, when uh, Deca Kane dies, his granddaughter um, and the angel Turiel bury will burn him, and then there's this moving cutscene, and it's the best. And it's all about just purity of just being a nice guy. Just really wholesome. <laughs> uh, and then yours is going to be less wholesome. Yeah, mine, mine's going to be this. Uh, when when Kane comes back, I think this is CNC3. Um, I, just, I just love that guy. You know that he has a theatre company? He has a theatre company? Yeah. Holy shit. Um, so basically, I, I, um, what was his name again? Um... Oh yeah, Joseph Joe Kukin. Mm. Um So basically, Kane's bald because right. th- I think this guy was like a, he's like Harrison Ford. He was like a, a carpenter or something on the set. Mm-hmm. Also, that that was Harrison Ford, but he was like a programmer dude or something at Westwood. <laughs> and they said we need like we're doing this live action cutscenes, and like we need a we need a bad guy. Okay. And and they were like, you do it. And so he basically, um, actually, this is the wrong cutscene. I'm gonna, I'm gonna yeah, no, this is like a fan made thing, isn't this it? This is crap. Um, I'm gonna Go. put, I, I'm gonna find and put it in. Uh, so basically, they said, you, you do it, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and he, um, so, so he had just been back from like chemo. Oh wow! That that's why he was bold, and and he just like. Basically, I think he, because he looked badass, um, that's that's one of the reasons they said you do it. And then he just they just picked him, and he just also he was like a at that point he already was like an amateur amateur actor or whatever. And yeah, mm-hmm. so then he had to be bald wow. for, forever. <laughs> and he's like, um, if you, if you look up uh, Joe Kukin, he has like this like stuff from his like acting thing where he plays like Shakespeare and whatever. He is really good. I love Kane. Anyway, sorry. Where were we? Uh, Philippe Wittele. No, what? Where? Feedback. Feedback. Okay. It's feedback time again. Um, Mike Ash Adshed. I always read it as Adshed. Whatever. Um, says, magnetized mini for the first time today using Joe Blue Tank Tip. This works amazingly well. Yeah, I've not, I've not been using that. Um, basically, because I can get away with popping, what, gluing one magnet in, putting another magnet on What it. is it? Uh, it was it was to use basically uh, oh Christ uh, a little bit of uh, I can't remember because I haven't been using it because I've got my own way and it's fine. <laughs> Shit. Um, in the last episode, Joe gave us a tip for how to align magnets. Oh yeah, um, yeah, 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 yeah. I remember that. With now. a little bit of blue tack. Uh, I'm glad that people are doing it. I I see Mike's been playing some uh 40k uh he played a game with the uh dark imperium box set i think they picked up two uh and then like each person had double the amount which is kind of cool it looked really nice they they can paint them nicely that's great um we had some feedback on steam as well fat what no no that can't be there's nothing on steam because uh literally so i think this is the the first week so uh Look behind the curtain is that on the show notes, which are technically running order, um, we've got a template that we just copy into it every week. Okay, and- uh, sorry, one one thing before we go into that, I'm just looking at not cutscenes. There's 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 one thing which is all uh, Command and Conquer three not 
cutscenes. Mm-hmm. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna put that in the show notes because also it has Trisha Helfer. Uh, so I can see why you've added that. Uh huh. Okay, sorry. <laughs> what? Uh, uh, um, so behind the curtains. Uh, so this is some feedback from Steen. Um, this episode is the first episode with the new revised template. Uh, where I removed Steam from the Contact Us section, so I didn't bother reading it. But we had feedback from Steam. Oh, fuck. It's Nuclear Dave. Hello, Nuclear Dave. How are you doing? Uh, Just posted so you can report that nothing ever happens. Uh, So I can't report that nothing ever happens in the Steam group. Apparently things do happen in the Steam group, so I will mention the Steam group. Is he like your nemesis? Nuclear Dave. (laughs) Uh, Oh, man. Dave. Nuclear day. You no, know, my nemesis would be like someone really, you know, really unwholesome. Like, like me. Yeah, you're my nemesis. <laughs> I am your nemesis. Okay. You know, someone, yeah, who's always angry at the time. I'm just posting photos of capybaras all over the place. <laughs> Fucking uh, capybaras. Do, <laughs> do they actually Happy exist? Bar. Oh my God, how capybaras totally exist. How is that? How is that animal? Like, how They're, can that exist in Darwin's universe? Like, they are the... They are the biggest uh, rodents on the planet. How is that like survival of the fittest? They're not the fittest. Because there are lots of them. There are just lots of them. They breed like nothing. I've never seen one. Where also, do they, they live? Have... Um, they live somewhere near like alligators or crocodiles. How do they survive that? They're fucking massive. Like, they are genuinely huge and quite terrifying. Um... Not like an alligator. An alligator is <laughs> big. No, but yeah, but they're 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 quite large. Like they're not going to be carried away by birds. It's generally quite chill. Just like pals with people, friendship. Just powers of friendship. It's good. Um, yeah, they're real. They're not like ninety kilos. I tr- did once like try to work. You know when trebuchet memes were a thing? It was like <laughs> throwing a ni- ninety kilogram mass over the three hundred meters. I try to work out how far a capybara will be thrown because. It's roughly 90 kilos, but it's more like 70 or something. Um, yeah, they're, they're pretty big. They're cool. They're just the best animals that are each kill. Um, we got Twitter feedback. Do you want to do that? Right. Yes, yes. Um, why? We, uh, I'm still trying to figure out. Like, um, Maybe I'm drunk now, but how is this revised? What's the revised? Oh, you just took, took Steam off, did you? Oh, is yeah, yeah. I just thought like, every time we're just saying, oh, man. There's the Steam group where nothing happens. Um, so in the in in the episode, the, way... f- the the first the first episode where I wasn't going to mention the Steam group, we get feedback about. Not I like hate about. our fucking listeners. <laughs> they I are listeners. they are the best. <laughs> I, I hate. <laughs> oh, I think I'm a little bit drunk too fast. They're just it's a fun. bunch of horrible capybaras that you can't get. There's rid no of. such thing as a horrible capybara. <laughs> they're, they're all capy bros. <laughs> Okay, so we had uh, Twitter feedback. Richard Gilson uh, at Rick R I C uh, Gills says started 400 mile trip by hitting shuffle on music player. Ghost Division by Z- Sabaton first song up, staying on brand for Geek News Radio. That is yes. the best trip. My commutes uh, recently have been about an hour and a half each way, uh, sometimes too. Uh, I have been filling these with audiobooks and just Sabaton. <laughs> Like First I know in the ex- line of fire. I know exactly where the speed cameras are. So <laughs> like, boom, it goes. It, oh, it's good times. <laughs> Did you doing like uh, like like a wing to SARS as you're going by the speed camera? It's like oh yep 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 exactly the speed limit. It's like I'm well. <laughs> Two hundred <laughs> miles at nightfall, <laughs> taken within a day. Hmm. That's good. I'm I'm gonna have a huge uh, trip on the weekend. Katie, we're going to a a wedding in Bavaria, so uh, I'm starting to hit the road tomorrow. Lovely. Um, so I'll I'll have Ghost Division. Um, and also have have feedback from uh, Nicholas Nicholas MM at Nicholas MM, who's uh, who's a very loyal listener of ours. Um, and he's he's doing uh, the Geschichte der vier Feldherren, so it's like f- fünf Feldherren now. He's like the fifth. Um, is he doing Imperial Fists? Yeah, it looks like uh, he has picked up uh, the Dark Imperium box set and has done some incessors. The guys with the guns, the guys, the normal blokes with the normal guns. They made like the 
you know, you'd think when they do like true scale marines, right? Yeah, yeah. You'd think like they made the bolters smaller. No, the <laughs> bolters are bigger. <laughs> They gotta be bigger, man. The the bolter is as big as like the old space marine, basically. How else do you enact your will on the universe without some sort of phallic symbol? Yeah, it's 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 very <laughs> phallic. Uh, like it's... the new bolters, I kinda like them. But I, the, I dig them the, a lot. Like, there's there's two things I don't like that much. You don't like the Watson Jigger? The... Well the the sickle magazine is too close to the trigger. And then no, it's got, no, like, a there's... massive barrel. The the thing that fucking cracks me up is that they have Picantini rails. Yeah, that's the one. Oh, so just... these are basically, like, the things you have on, like, on like real... Wa- you know that the rails are at the top where you can just slide in, like, um, scopes or, like, a flashlight? Yeah, um, or... it's, it's the kind of... Did I just say flashlight? Just have a flashlight uh, on your... like, yeah. It's it's the thing that's kind of like crenellated, like the serrated thing that yeah. you plug in bonus bullshit like Pick and silly, right? underslung if, grenade launchers. If you wanna have an underslung dildo on your Heckler and Koch. <laughs> if you wanna rifle. have an underslung flashlight, please make sure it in a direction such that you won't shoot yourself in the fucking <laughs> <Yeah. Like, laughs> While using a flashlight. I will not stand for any of our listeners having sex and shooting themselves. <laughs> it's not allowed. I forbid you. It's not, it's not pure. It's t- it's distinctly unwholesome. It's very slanesh. <laughs> no, do not fuck yourself with a stick in any rail. <laughs> oh, this gives me an idea. Have like slanesh marines. Like Primaris, mm-hmm. slanesh Primaris marines with like dildos on the bolters. <laughs> and and this like dildos. Oh my god! Imagine the sound they make when they fire. <laughs> so I'm just like imagining like a just like a yeah, literally that. Just like the sound of something going down a tube, like a really. Oh, yeah. That is unpleasant. It sounds like a, a, a hyperloop going past. Yeah, the sound of Elon Musk's smugness. <laughs> Yeah, that's also now that would be Zinch, wouldn't it? Mm. Elon Musk is definitely Zinch, Zinchian influence. Definitely, anyway, yes. Yeah. Yeah, so Nicholas is is is, is um, joining in with the making well, of he's, the he's, miniatures. He's he's better than me already. He's got like one painted there. Yeah, I got to I got to up my game. I got to like uh, assemble forty miniatures tomorrow and then paint ninety. Oh, God. <laughs> and our our next Twitter feedback is kind of well I started it but it's kind of it's uh, David Geimer at Warlord Geimer writer know. at Brack Library yeah um so he recently posted that he's gone full time mm, so he used to do sciencey things yeah biology shit yeah um and now he's full time writer and I was like this sounds great and I wanted him to to have him on the show, and he says he's willing to do that. Yeah, so, so we we'll, have to we'll get him on the show. Yeah, I'll just need to organize uh, get, uh, yeah. that between yeah. my moves and everything. I need to sort this out, but I will because he's great. I mean, we talked yeah. to him. He's also very tall. He is very yeah. tall. We guy. should uh, we should also try to get um, James Hewitt on. Oh he's, yeah, uh, he's got like um, he's also now he's, he's left. Games Workshop. Yeah, he's got like what's a cat? cat? A, a game, uh, some sort of cat-based sort of game design consultant. Look this up. Uh, Needy Cat Games. Needy Cat uh, Games. Yeah, he's the guy who uh, designed uh, Blood Bowl, the new Blood Bowl. Basically. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so he recently left Games Workshop to go do consultancy stuff, which is a bit sad. But he also it's sad, but uh, you know, follow your dreams. Uh, just look. What's that? Need yeah, it's it's is it at Needy Cat Games? Uh, yes, James Hewitt. Yeah. Uh, cool, awesome. Um, we also had an unusual bit of feedback. Um, I was at Regular Features Live episode two hundred and fifty in the King Billy Pub in Nottingham, uh. And just as the show started, well, just as we were, like, getting into the room, the very cramped, very sweaty room, um, to listen to some guys talk shit, um, a guy turns around and says, Are you Dave? I'm like, yes. Are you Mega Slippers? Yes. How do you know me? And it turns out it's a podcast. Um, so your internet went to shit again. Oh, and... my God. The most wholesome thing of the episode. How far did I get? <laughs> uh, something. Uh, it's a podcast. 
Um, so are you Dave? Basically, yeah. Are you Dave? And it's like, are you Mega Slippers? And then it was, oh my god, I listened to the podcast. Wow, which was super cool. Uh, it was really nice. Craig's great. Craig's from Scotland. I this believe... happens. People listen yeah. to this shit. I, I was kind of taken aback that a human being listens to me talk bullshit. Uh, I think Craig said he's from somewhere between Perth and Dundee. Uh, and also he was with some other people, some of which were also called Craig. I managed <laughs> to give one of them some career advice, which maybe wasn't... <laughs> oh, the... God, no. Don't maybe do not... what Dave said. No! <laughs> Stop! Uh, he, yeah, basically seemed to do exactly what I did at university and kind of get a 2-2 two -two in a physics degree and then do engineering. Uh, and yeah, I don't really remember what I said. You poor man! Don't do what he said! What? Ask um, Ellie! Yeah, was, Ask Ellie! Uh, yeah, it was it was great meeting people. Um, yeah, also, regular features live shows are great because you get utterly fucking wasted. I haven't, it's, uh, this sounds good. I haven't listened to this podcast yet. I, uh, I think you would quite like it because they're rude. That's always good. There we go. Uh, it's a comedy. It's a comedy podcast. Might be uh, considered a prerequisite. Yes. Uh, By the way, have you? Um, yeah, I'll, I'll try to check. I should really put that on the list. Um, have you listened to the Crate and Crowbar where they talk about the new Dota uh, PVE thing? The Dota P. Oh yes, I have. <laughs> that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's hilarious. I love that. That's good. So good. <laughs> Basically, it's shit. And then Chris is like. I think it's quite shit. That's basically what he says. He doesn't say it like this, but he's like, he's a massive Dota fan. But he's like, but uh, I wouldn't, I don't want to preempt Pip. And Pip's, Pip's like, it's horrible. <laughs> so good. I ah, love that. Anyway, yes, regular features. We'll try it. It just reminded me, like, I, I Googled the images and there's a picture. And this might be in a pub. Mm -hmm. Might be a live show. They're sitting in a pub. It kind of looks like the Crate and Crowbar when they're sitting in, like, Tom Francis' living room. Yeah. On YouTube. Um, so the the live shows. So the, most of them. Uh, the big ginger beardy bloke. His name is John Log Blythe, and he he owns a pub in Nottingham. Um, he owns so a some, pub. Fuck, that's uh, good. Yeah, he used to be a video game journalist. Um, but all the other guys sort of work in video games journalism in London. So normally they hold their live shows. They do like one, uh, and they do it in a some sort of theatre thing in London. Uh, but for the 250th, they moved up north. Well, at least to the Midlands-ish. Uh, uh, and, yeah, it, it was in his pub. Uh, so the photo you're looking at is probably of them just, like, huddled in the pub. Because uh, the room they do it in is very small. Oh, my God, it's so small. Oh, my God, it's so sweaty. Ugh. They didn't, um, they didn't uh, factor you coming. Well, it, like... <laughs> The moment people go in that room, it just gets way. Uh, but it was it was it was a laugh. People should go if they can like find the time to get to one. It's really quite funny. Uh, maybe bone up on some of the in jokes beforehand. Uh, it's good. It's good times. Okay. I got I, I got a selfie with me and Joe Scrabbles because uh, we kind of look like the same person. It's adorable. Are they on YouTube? Um, no, but we are because fans. we are on YouTube. <laughs> I forgot to mention yeah. this last time. We, uh, we, it was a thing. Don't get that, excited. Like, it's not video. <laughs> no. Yeah. It's basically just so you can listen to us at YouTube uh, if you're at work and don't because, have access to podcasts. Because or we are that alternative. We just yeah. put audio on YouTube. Yeah. Because fucking images are overrated. Fuck it. Fuck it. That was um, like. Ah, oh, fucking Joe Resick is like, why isn't this <laughs> like, why does that this have like moving bars? I, I can't be fucked. It's not, mm. it's, you're not, Joe, you're not supposed to look at it. I know it's on YouTube. You're not supposed to look at it. Just open a tab and listen to it. But Fab, if they are listening to us in an audio format, yeah, we've been brought to them via Bite Mark Coaster. <laughs> yes. Also the, um, the YouTube kind of like yeah, it's it's all brought to you by Bitemark. Bitemark's great. Yeah, buy buy your servers from Bitemark because Coast. it's the servers. They don't like it's. I've ever since we've been with Bitemark, I've never had it that I'd like download the show anywhere. I download the show quite a lot just to see if it works mm -hmm. and, and to get our numbers up. Um, <laughs> uh, 
and it always works. Always. It's like when when we were doing LO and we were with Lipson. Like, yeah, you know, I was paying for that. Quite and, slow, yeah. Well, no, actually, it was like quite, but sometimes it just broke. Yeah, and, sometimes it would just be like down. I don't know if it, well, because back when Linux was, was around, I had terrible internet, so I couldn't really diagnose as if it was Nothing Linux's has fault. changed, Dave. You still have terrible internet. Oh, it's, it's less bad than it used to be, but it I still have, drops out sometimes. I actually will have, I have so good, when I moved to Hamburg, my internet's going to be fucking uplink to the fucking fiber uplink to the fucking core. It's going to be like cyberpunk. I just bought a 250 euro router. Oh, I bought a Fritz box. Jawohl. A Fritz the, box. Fr from AVM, the German router, it's called Fritz box. It's because it's always <laughs> on the Fritz. It's, they're, they're called Fritz box. It's the most stupid name ever. On on Good. the on the packaging it says Fritz also for sign. Like, hmm. I have the meme ready when it breaks. Hogan! Why is the box <laughs> on the Fritz again? Um anyway, uh I need to I need to buy this because this can cope with three hundred megabits per second. And can't other I'm, routers deal I'm with gonna it. Gonna have two hundred. Well, you really like if you have 200 megabits per second down and 100 up, which is what I'm gonna have. It's so good. Uh, if you have like fiber shit, like you can use a normal router, but it's gonna like just fucking die. Okay. Because they're not, turns out they're not built for like delivering internet at speed. <laughs> I also always, I want, always want to buy a Fritz box because they're actually quite good at delivering like updates. Like this thing like we're, we're doing through now is just like this Vodafone fucking China shit. What's it like? Oh, C CBN? CBN? Like bullshit shit thing dies every like two days. Fucking piece of shit. Oh like, god, when um, I was in London, I had yeah. a Vodafone. Did I tell you the story where I used was to... It, well, you had the Virgin Media thing and you like oh, yeah. spray painted the fucking so, case. So I was living, for people who don't know this, so I was living in London in a tiny flat, like tiny, maybe like 15 square meters, whatever. Like tiny. Were you ever there? Don't think. No, I, no. I never went, no, but you described the size of it. It was basically my bed and then yeah. like twice a, that size and then like a, a little. And then like a fridge. Yeah, a little kitchen with like a fridge and like a, a, a bathroom like off the, off the main entrance. And like I had this. Was it, was it Virgin? It was going to be version because I also had that router but didn't put it in my bedroom. Yeah, so I, I, I only have a room. There was only one <laughs> room. So I, 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 I connect everything. So I go to bed at night. It's like, what the fuck is like a fucking UFO landing in my bedroom? Where's this Christmas tree? It's like this router. So I put it under the bed because yeah, I thought... Glows, it's like, like your bed's got neon lights. Like, yeah, it's like a fucking... Like a fucking, yeah, like a car from like Fast and the Furious. So I was like, that evening, I was like, fuck it. I need to sleep. I need to work tomorrow. What the hell? Like, you can't put stuff over it because then it's mm. just going to get hot and burn. So I, I turn on the lights again. I look around the room and it's like, what can I, what can I use? Can't gaffer tape it up. It's like, it needs like the vents, air vents, right? Mm. So I just see this can of like Matt DW's like primer. <laughs> I'm like, fuck it. Turn the router off. Just go. Psh. Because it was like, it didn't have any, like with normal routers, they have like LEDs on the top yeah. that you can just gaffer over or whatever. It's no, usually... it's like, it's like behind. No, it was in the thing. router. It was yeah. like shining out of like the, the vents for like the uh, hot yeah. air to get out. So I just sprayed it. I just sprayed it with, <laughs> with primer until it was just like completely stealth. And I've, I used that for all the time. I actually sent it back to them when I left. <laughs> anyway, I have a jo I have a German router now. It's probably configurable so the lights can be turned off. But also I have more rooms. And I have, I have, I have a fiber hub. When you come in the flat, there's like this thing where it's like behind a... You know, it's like this... It's like a patch bay. It's amazing. It has fiber. The fiber actually goes to the flat. It's in the flat. It's the future. You could look down the, the fiber yeah. and not see it because I'm pretty sure it's infrared. Oh, God. Some some guy at the company, you know, when I was at Net Cologne, like some guy actually, I think he like ruined his eyes. 
Oh, wow. Because he looked into the fiber and another guy used the laser pointer at the other end. Oh, no! What the fuck? No. Yeah. No, Stop this. Do not do that. Bad Don't plan. look into the fiber. <laughs> anyway. Should we uh, wrap it up? We should. But I will nonetheless still open a beer. It's because you're going to continue drinking because you have tomorrow yeah. off. Exactly. And the show's the now on brick. YouTube, but only audio, but go there. <laughs> you can contact us through various means. You can email us at gnr at sixgun.org if your opinions do not fit in a tweet. If your opinions fit in a tweet, <laughs> you can tweet us collectively at Geek News Radio. We both have access to that. Uh, fab is at Fab Shit. That's F A B S H. Fox on Alpha Bravo Sierra Hotel. I am at Mega Slippers. That is at Mega Slippers. We have a Facebook group where you can post the things. We also have Discord where people post links to Spotify, laying off loads of people in Germany, and it being the end of German startups. Uh, we SoundCloud. Also- uh, what did I say? Did I say Spotify. Spotify, I meant Spotify is German. It's Spotify Dutch, is not in German. Swedish. Neither is SoundCloud. SoundCloud's uh, in Germany. It's in Berlin. Yeah, they're laying out. Uh, laying it's off now everybody. significantly less in Germany. Uh, we <laughs> also have. We also have a Steam. Good. Post things to make me say that we have a Steam. We should probably post things in the Steam group. Have we updated the reviews? Uh, <laughs> probably not. <laughs> Because <laughs> we we were going to put in reviews about the signal from what signal uh, from Dolva, which I played a little bit of uh, and I thought it was all right, but it kind of made me a bit motion sick for some reason, so I stopped. Yeah, people have said that. Yeah, I I, didn't I, I have that. had beers, so it could be that. <laughs> I'll play it over sometime. <laughs> um, that's well, it. Games need to be played drunk. Like if they can't be played drunk, there's a problem. Okay, so there we go. Signal from Dolva, zero out of ten. Play drunk. Okay, that's that's a review. Okay, I'll put that up. No, put your review. It's legit. Um, hack the planet, fuckers. Sixgun.tv. We're on YouTube. Yay. <laughs> oh, my God. I've gone off the cliff. <laughs> what? Um, this bear is so strong, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Awesome. Oh, that's the end. 10 out of 10. Ugh. <sighs>